And now the Bruins of UCLA. Two close wins this year for the Bruins. UCLA is 10, 1, and 2 here in the Rose Bowl, so this has been a good place for them to play football. Pat, Nebraska is just at a record pace again. Over 500 yards in offense each game. And this week, Terry Donahue and his staff labeled the Nebraska offense the thing. Well, they really can overwhelm you. And you think after they lost a Heisman Trophy winner, an Outland Trophy winner, the quarterback was all big eight for three years, the number one pick in the NFL draft, you think they would have slowed down, but they haven't. Pat, they're so dimensional. They do so many things offensively. And they really present some problems to you, and they can sequence their play so much. But what really starts is their tailback, Jeff Smith. Now, they like to run their pitch play. It is their base play. What, here, what happens here is to block the right guard is the key. Now, he has to block that linebacker in front of him. He has two options. He can go straight ahead and block him, or he can come around the block of the tight end and pick off that linebacker as he's skating out to make a play. Then the next key block is the block of the fullback on the strong safety. Now, the tailback's going to take the pitch. He's going to run off the block of the fullback and cut either inside or outside. What makes Nebraska difficult is the way they sequence plays. After they've run this at you a few times, then they use their fullback, Tom Rathman, to run the trap play. Now, they run trap plays as well as any team in America. Now, this man, Tom Rathman's had an off to a tremendous start. Their fullback trap play starts out similarly. Here, the right guard, though, doubles down in the nose man. The tailback looks the same, and the left guard is going to trap that linebacker as he fills the hole there. It creates a big hole for the fullback as he takes the ball, and really, before he can bat an eyelash, he is into the secondary. They really do have so many dimensions. This will be the sixth meeting between these two. UCLA leads the series three to two, but Nebraska has won the last two. We'll be back with the opening kickoff here from the Rose Bowl. The setting, the Rose Bowl, Pasadena. Beautiful day here in Southern California. 75 degrees at kickoff, and for the first and only time in the regular season of play, Nebraska will be playing on a natural surface. They'll be playing on grass. The officials in charge of the game, Jim Springer, Gene Reamer, Stuart Brown, Jones, Borgard, and Schnell. And the man who is charged with taking over for the injured Steve Bono is Matt Stevens. He's thrown one pass this year. He did play in a mop-up situation against Illinois in the Rose Bowl. But Pat, imagine what's going through his mind. This is a tough time for him, but he say he's a very confident young man. Nebraska has won the toss. They've elected to receive Tom Osborne, 47 years old, in his 12th year, the nation's third winningest coach. In the last three years, his team has been so close to winning three national titles, losing each year to the eventual national title winner. Ken Potter will kick on for UCLA. Doug DeBose, Jeff Smith back for Nebraska. And Potter kicks that one out of the back. They'll set it up at the 20-yard line. Offensively, let's look now at Nebraska in their backfield. Sunberg, a fifth-year senior, a native of Lincoln. Rathman, he had 108 yards in the first game. Smith, ahead of Rozier's pace of a year ago. Swanson, they call him the Cowboy. He goes into rodeos. And Kimball, from California, excellent receiver. Crane will alternate with Bruce Hemer at the tight end spot. This backfield has fumbled 12 times in the first two games. And they've lost seven of them. From the 20-yard line, Jeff Smith for two yards. And now the offensive line for Nebraska is it big. Benning weighs 290 pounds. Griminger alongside him, a two-year starter. Their center is six foot six, Trainowitz. Right-hand side is Orton, one of four players from Nebraska City. Morrow walk on a hard worker. And Sunberg now is a second down and nine. Smith across the 25 to the 26. He will be four yards short of the first down. It'll bring up third down. Tony Phillips with a tackle. Defensively, here's a look at UCLA. Bellicano. 
Toronto, an All-American candidate. Randall, hard worker, excellent against the run. Locke has been injured, but he's at full strength today. And Whalen has been their best down lineman up front. Phillips is not big. He's an ex-running back. On a third down, Sunberg on target. Scott Kimball, and that is a first down for Nebraska, a 10-yard pickup. Well, we told you how many different ways Nebraska can beat you. Remember, their first two plays were just power football. But here on third and three, when they needed a big co completion, when they're backed up, they found a way to do that, too. Scott Campbell, number 88, just was, ran a simple little square out route. Too big a cushion by the UCLA secondary on third and three. Last week, Sundberg hit eight of ten passes, hits his first here this afternoon. From the 37, Rathman, the fullback, he doesn't gain anything. Let's check now the rest of that Bruin defense. Lee Knowles, they call him an overachiever, plays hard. Tommy Taylor freight train because he hits so hard. <laughs> Welch, the fastest man they have in that secondary. Pitts, Elijah Pitts, son, leads by example. Washington, he's going to be the mold of some outstanding free safeties they've had here. And Gasser back after missing two games. Sunberg on second and 10 deep. Excellent coverage by Ron Pitts, number 47. Scott Kimball, the intended receiver. That play brings up two points I think we need to watch here in this game. That man right there, Craig Sunberg, is one of the best ball handlers you're going to see. He fooled everybody, including the free safety of UCLA, James Washington, the young freshman. And that's a lot allowed that receiver Kimball to run a big post pattern but there's excellent play action fakes by Craig Sunberg and James Washington the free safety of UCLA is a very aggressive football player. There's the man we were talking about Washington the freshman the red shirt. Here is Smith on a third and ten and he's very close to the first down. Across the 45 I don't believe he got it. Greg Rutledge number 30 for UCLA up to make the stop it's fourth down. Interesting call on third and ten. A little while ago, we saw him go deep. A draw play is a very good call if you're going to fool somebody. The line play here of, of UCLA, the key today is how much UCLA can penetrate. There was not much penetration there. There was a big hole. Everybody was expecting pass, and that's why Jeff Smith was rather around, around to gain maybe nine yards, but not enough for the first. Fourth down a yard. Scott Livingston will punt the ball, and Ron Pitts goes back deep. Hit it high. Not exceptionally long. Let's see where they're going to mark it. They step out across the 25 to the 27. He's still walking. Now let's look offensively at UCLA. Matt Stevens, the guy who will get his first starting call, throws a very fast ball. We'll develop that later. Wiley had a strong first game of 91 yards. Andrews, super quick. Burrell has the blazing speed outside. Gerard had 48 catches a year ago. And Tunnell was a starting fullback last year. First down now from the 28. Wide open, Carl Doral. That's a first down. That is a 18-yard pickup. You don't think Terry Donahue has much confidence in number 11, Matt Stevens? The very first play they came, he comes right out. Now, Homer Smith is their offensive coordinator. He feels they can throw the ball on Nebraska. The young quarterback, Matt Stevens, comes out and does that, finds a wide open Carl Durrell. Durrell will alternate with Mike Young. He's out of there right now after catching that 18-yarder. From the 47, first down, the Bruins. In motion is Andrews. Stevens again. Catch by Tunnell, the tight end. Nope, he did not catch it. He dropped the ball at the 50-yard line. Now the offensive line for the Bruins. Hartmeyer coming back from a broken ankle. Mannon, alongside him, can play center as well as guard. Barron is their most improved offensive lineman. McCullough, he just scratches and claws up there. He's tough. And Deval Love, he is an All-American candidate. This offensive line has not played well the first two weeks, and Terry Donahue is concerned about them. Second and ten for the Bruins. Wiley and Andrews, the I-back formation. Stevens quarterback draw to the 50. And, Pat, we expected to see a lot of that. Scott Strasburger, 90, read it well and made the tackle. Third one down the dimension, and seven. 
one of the dimensions that Steve Bono had so much for UCLA was the ability to beat you with his legs. Now, we, Matt Stevens is a smaller quarterback and presumably can run these draws a little bit better as well. But he gets steps up into the hole on the quarterback draw. He did not fool Scott Strasberger, who is a senior. Third and seven from the 50-yard line. Just underway, 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. No score. Good protection. Excellent protection. Wide open, Tanel. He was at the 20. Excellent, excellent protection that time. And it was a good call and a good read by Matt Stevens. What UCLA must do today, in my estimation, is to get the ball to their tight end and Danny Andrews, their halfback. They have to catch maybe 8, 10 passes between them. Because Nebraska's defense double covers the outside receivers. That's going to leave tight end Derek Tennell one-on-one coverage against a linebacker. He beat the man right there. The ball was just a little bit too long. Back deep is Jeff Smith to receive this punt. Kevin Bournefe, who is leading the Pac-10 in punting, eighth in the nation, angling for the corner. And he just missed it. He almost had that out at the one-yard line. 50-yard punt that time at the 20-yard line. Nebraska has it for the second time. Score, 10.53 to go in the first quarter here at the Rose Bowl. Top-ranked Nebraska has the ball at the 20-yard line after that 50-yard punt. The key here defensively for UCLA is their defensive front to be able to penetrate, to throw the rhythm of that Nebraska offense off. Watch their guards, Nebraska's guards, as they pull. If they can shoot those gaps, they can disrupt the rhythm of Nebraska. Jeff Smith out to the 25. He has a first down. Pick up a 13 yards to the 33. James Washington, Herb Welch combine on the tackle. We talked about the dimensions. Here's another look at power of football by Nebraska. Jeff Smith, who's carrying the ball about 27 times a game, follows a nice block by his fullback, Rathman. And you notice his eyes. You see his eyes. His head is up the whole time. He has very good eyes, very good vision, able to pick holes. Does not have the blazing speed. He's quicker than Rozier, but not as tough or maybe as strong. On the option, Sunberg to the short side of the field. Rathman this time, the fullback, received the pitch. Advances to the 39, a gain of six yards on the play. Delicano and Taylor made the stop. Rathman replaced Mark Shaleen, and he just beats up on his teammates. They say he'll come up and bite you in the face. <laughs> he knocks their shoulders down and had an excellent game, 108 yards, the first game of the year. He's in there with Smith. Second and four. Looks like the blitz coming. Sunberg. Wide open is Scott Kimball, and Kimball with his second catch of the day, out to the 50-yard line. 12-yard pickup. This is good vision by Craig Sunberg, the quarterback, number 15, right there in the middle of your screen. He saw the blitz. He called an audible, which is a good audible, a little quick out to Scott Kimball. Again, James Washington, right there, number three, is defending along with Ron Pitts, but they're playing too loosely. If they're going to... Blitz like that, you know Nebraska is going to throw short routes. Your coverage has to be a little bit tighter. This time Smith on a first down to the 46. And that in the early going, the trend may be a little bit surprising. Nebraska throwing as much as they are. Matt Stevens, inexperienced, came out throwing. Well, from a Nebraska standpoint, Tom Osborne is not afraid of throwing the football, although, as he told us last night, when they've thrown the ball 30 times a game, that's, those are the games they've lost. Sunberg waited a long time to be the quarterback. Backed up Turner Gill. Nate Mason. This year, it's his job. Get to Smith. Over there was Welch, also David Randall, 64. Let's go to New York now for an update. Here's Pat O'Brien. 20 all between the hedges there in Athens, Georgia. Tough place to play. Yes, it is. Third down, five to go for Nebraska. Sunberg keeps it. And James Swanson caught it, I believe, at the 40-yard line. That's very close to the first down. They may have to measure. The interesting thing, though, Gary, is the UCLA defense has put Nebraska in situations they have not been the first two games. Here you see the catch here by Shane Swanson, but they've been in the last two drives, third and four, third and five situations. Now, remember, Nebraska averages seven yards on first down. You can see the measurement there. He did make the first down. But this is what UCLA wants to do. It wants to put Nebraska in situations they're not comfortable with, and that is third and five. So the first down at the 40-yard line. Tom Osborne's team 
known to be a running team, and here in the early going, Sunberg has been doing most of the damage. Swanson, along with Kimball, split to the bottom. Scott Porter, the new fullback. Here's Smith. He'll go for six yards inside the 35-yard line. Coming into this game, Pat, Nebraska was averaging seven yards on first down. It's, it's amazing. When you have a team in second and three situations all day, you're going to win. And they have. And they've done that to opponents for years and years and years. It's because they run the ball so well. They beat you up up front. That offensive line, you mentioned how big they were. They're as big as the L.A. Raiders, and they're probably quicker. 16,000 fans. The faithful from Nebraska here in this crowd of 75,000. Jeff Smith on a second down, close to another first down. Tom Osborne sending the plays in through Kimball and Jason Gamble, a freshman from Santa Barbara, California. And Tom, he is the offensive coordinator of his team as well, and as we said, he is an incredibly imaginative man. Now, you wouldn't gather that from talking to him because he is very dry and quiet and soft-spoken, but he is a very imaginative football man. A quiet confidence, third down, less than a yard. Smith will have the first down, maybe more, inside the 10. They're going to mark the football at the 7. Dennis Price, number 6, eventually dropped him. One of the trademarks of this Nebraska team over the years has run the, been running the pitch into the boundary. You see the guards pulling the fullback block right there. That's Grimager, Orton, the guards getting out in front. And you saw the great eyes of Jeff Smith as well as his strength. But this has been a trademark. Get people down, beat them down, wear them down. By the fourth quarter, they're going to blow you out of the game. They say he stepped out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Smith already has 61 yards. The Cornhuskers on a first down. Sunberg on the option inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. A gain of 5. David Randall, 64, made the stop. Just more evidence, Gary, of why they're difficult to defend. We saw power football into the boundary. We've seen a couple of passes. Now we're seeing Sunberg, who is not fleet of foot by any means, again, run an option play. It's the second option play he has run today. And to defend against the option, you have to be so disciplined. It's different than defending against a power game. This drive started at the 20. This is the 11th play of the drive. From the 8, Smith. And Smith is in for the touchdown. Polls, 14 of the last 16. An impressive drive of 80 yards, and Smith with his third touchdown run of the year. Point after attempt by Scott Livingston. And the kick is not good. It's wide right. Now, what's the block at the center? Mark Twain with number 57 right there in the middle of your screen. And the fullback, 26, Rathman. And you see the right guard, Harry Grimager, 58. They're all making outstanding blocks. Now, watch the way they are pushing that whole UCLA front five, six yards back. We're giving, giving Jeff Smith plenty of room to find his way to the end zone. Another look at 57 right there in the middle of the screen. And 58, Harry Grimager, the left guard. We saw him pull around the center. It's a scoop block. They double team the nose. And here, this was a drive, a methodical drive. You see, last year, Nebraska had a lot more firepower. But this year, they've been incredibly methodical and efficient. There was a drive, and that is the first time that Nebraska scored in the first quarter. They've been slow starting. They've been a little self-destructive fumbling the football, but not today. I think they will score in the first quarter sometime again this year. <laughs> I think you're right. Here's Livingston, who missed the point after. Back is Carl Durrell. And Durrell will make it out to the 18-yard line. Well, you haven't met the Nebraska defense. Let's take that opportunity right now to do that. Phil Weber, very good against the run. Three seniors up front, but this guy's a sophomore. Spockman, Graber, the nose guard. He plays full tilt all the time. Stuckey, like he's coming out of a cannon when he plays. And Strasburger's their best pass rusher up front. 
line of scrimmage, the 19. Six to nothing, Nebraska. 6.49 to go in this first quarter. Danny Andrews. And Andrews makes it to the 20, and that's all, a gain of one. Secondary for Nebraska, they do some unusual things, and the linebackers help that come about. Mark Dom, he sets the defensive tempo. Mumford, just a sophomore, they think greatness is ahead of him. Burke, the big play performer at cornerback. Harris, remember the Oklahoma game last year? Two big deflections. McCashlin likes to blitz. And this guy, Brett Clark, is an all big eight performer. Second down. Nine yards from the 20. Stevens, and that is Bill Weber, 87, that almost took his head off. He looked almost like a face mask carry by Bill Weber on Matt Stevens. And this was also an audible by Matt Stevens. He put his hand on his helmet, telling his receiver something. Pretty good protection early on. Stevens tries to step it up into the pocket. But Bill Weber comes right off the corner. Again, you see the concern that Terry Donahue has about this offensive line. Bono was rushed in his first two football games, and we've seen Matt Stevens get sacked here today. Well, that puts him in a long situation of third and 17. From the shotgun. Stevens, intended for Sherrard, and we have a penalty flag at the 25-yard line. Sherrard, the intended receiver, he has seven catches coming into today. Brad Smith dropping off, defending on that play from the defensive end spot. It's holding against Nebraska. So that will get UCLA out of a real jam. They would have had fourth down coming up. Holding on the defense before the pass is thrown. Penalized the previous spot. Automatic first down. They had a third and 17, an incomplete pass, and now they have a first down of the 24. The Goodyear Blimp Columbia. Beautiful panoramic view here in Pasadena. It resides in Torrance, California. It being the blimp. Nick Nicolari, our captain, who's Dick Nelson, the cameraman, as they survey the situation. First down now for the Bruins. Stevens, Danny Andrews couldn't catch it. We have an update from the Big Ten. Let's go to College Football Report and Pat O'Brien. Iowa losing to Penn State. That'd be something to get off to an 0-2 start. Second down from the 24. Brian Wiley in the backfield. Nice catch. Mike Sherrard caught it at the 35. An 11-yard pickup on the play. First down. What a contrast in styles between these two offenses. At the bottom of the screen, number 82, Mark Sherrod. You see he's wide open. Another audible by Matt Stevens. There is nobody covering him. And Matt Stevens did the right thing. He called a quick little audible. Dumped the ball out there for Sherrod. I've been impressed with Stevens so far, Gary. He's thrown the ball pretty well. He's made a couple of nice audibles. Sherrod, of course, one of those celebrated walk-ons. As Homer Smith put it, he says he walked on to glory. Came in as a 155-pounder. James Primus in the backfield now. He's been hurt. Matt Stevens. Darrell, the intended receiver. Dave Burke and Brett Clark back defending for Nebraska. And not a bad read again by Matt Stevens. Now number 10, Brett Clark is the free safety. He should be very, very deep, but Matt Stevens read that coverage, and we said they played some, uncon some unconventional coverages where Brett Clark actually squeezes up and plays almost like a linebacker, and he tried to get the ball deep to Durrell. Not a bad read by Stevens. Durrell again leaves the game. Mike Young comes in. They are very equal at that flanker position. Second down, 10. Tunnell goes in motion. Good protection again, and then, as I said that, he gets dumped and hit hard. And I mean really belted by Bill Weber. Weber's hit him a couple of times. That took his head off one time. Stevens looked like he has hurt his shoulder a little bit, as well as number 67, Duval Love. Love is down. This is the All-American candidate. He's the leader up front. Matt Stevens is also hurt, Gary. He had the time pad, and then all of a sudden, Weber appeared from nowhere and belted him. That's the second time in a row Weber is, or second time this first quarter Weber has done that. 
So while they look over Love, we're going to take a break here from the road. Well, Stevens is going to be able to continue. He tested the arm during the break. The Val Love had to leave, though, and Robert Cox has replaced him a tackle. Third down, 10 for UCLA at the 5-10 mark of the first quarter. Stevens going up top. Young is there, and he's out of bounds. Dave Burke, 33, defending on the play. And so UCLA will have to punt the ball. But again, you're impressed with Stevens because he finds the one-on-one -on -one coverage. They were doubling the other receivers. And see, Mike Young is one-on-one -on -one with 33, Dave Burke. He threw it over his outside shoulder, but he couldn't just keep one foot in. Here's another look at Mike Young, number 18. And remember, in college football, it just needs to have one foot in possession. Makes a nice, actually, a beautiful catch. But the official was right there and called him out of bounds. Bonafé will punt for UCLA. Swanson and Jeff Smith back. The left-footed kick high in the air. Swanson at the 15 and dropped at the 22-yard line. That was James Washington down to make the tackle after a 50-yard punt. We've seen something interesting here in this first quarter, Gary. UCLA has come up with third and long two or three times. We saw a third and 17 there. They were third and 10. In contrast, Nebraska's offense are coming up in third and ones, third and twos, actually second and ones, second and twos, and that has been the diff difference thus far. Those dogs from Georgia leading by three. And Ohio State with advantage over the Hawkeyes of Iowa, third quarter. Sunbird getting straight ahead. Tom Rathman, the fullback out of Grand Island, Nebraska. Torrey Pankoff, 55, made the stop. Florida State, they have been scoring a lot of points, and they lead in that one. And Oklahoma State, who shellacked Arizona State earlier, and they may be the surprise team thus far in the early going. And Maryland with their first victory. Bouncing back, West Virginia was 3-0. Boy, look at that. Oh, Pittsburgh has lost all three of theirs. That really surprises me. On the 30-yard line. Second like down and three. And that'll be a first down for Nebraska. Jeff Smith on the carry. Let's check some other scores. Harvard, 35-21 over Columbia. So Nebraska now will have a first down. The ball at the 29-yard line. And Michigan defeated Wisconsin. Bo Schimbeckler's team bouncing back from that loss at the hands of Washington. And Washington sure looks strong. The eye formation with Rathman and Smith. Sunbird to throw. Intercepted. Picking it off is Dennis Price. Price, a red shirt freshman with remarkable ability. And that's a big turnaround for UCLA. The Sunbird had somebody open. You see the play action take. It draws the linebackers up. He just overthrew number 84, Brian Hemer there. And there is number six, Dennis Price, to make the interception. But Sunbrook did have both, and it looked like he just kind of hurried his throw and dumped the ball right there to the strong safety. Did not even see him. Sunbird is suffering the interception. Sets it up now at the 44, and we have people jumping all over the place. Barron, the center, fired out, and all of a sudden, Shed 99 hitting. Sunberg with his third interception of the year. There's Shed 99. He backs up Graber at that nose guard spot. You want to play in the trenches? <laughs> no, thank you. I'll, I'll play quarterback, thank you. Watch what happens, though, when you make a mistake. You don't know much sure what to do. Now what do you do? Okay. <laughs> Shed looked like he was in one of those hamburger grills where you hit everybody coming your way. There's no call on that play. So it's second down and 10. That was a play, but there was no penalty. We're on both teams. Stevens in trouble. Good pressure put on by Danny Noonan, number 95, a sophomore out of Lincoln. You know, it was interesting, coming into this year, Terry Donahue thought his offensive line was going to be one of the strengths of his team. Really, it's the same offensive line that returned from last year's Rose Bowl game. They were so impressive against Illinois, but they've been disappointing this whole, uh, whole season, and today you're seeing more evidence of it. That is one reason they were picked so high. One magazine picked them number one of the nation. Was that better in line? Third down now, 16. From the shotgun. Strasburger all the way back from that defensive end spot almost had it. 
It's amazing coverage by Scott Strasburg. Remember, he's a defensive end. He's 205 pounds, which is actually light, but he is double covering the Mike Sherrard, the wide receiver right there. He seems going to come right underneath him. He read the out pattern as well as you're going to see someone read it. Beautiful defensive read by Strasburg. Well, he's a brilliant student. He had a chance to go to Dartmouth from this summer. Was in the radiology department at the University of Pennsylvania. Very bright young man, and he diagnosed that one well. Bonifa get that one off the side of his foot. But he gets a bounce, and let's see. It'll be at the 12-yard line. At the 12, 38-yard punt. Nebraska with a 6 to nothing lead. From the 13-yard line, and that's a startling statistic. It's incredible to me, and that shows you the kind of difference between the two attacks. You see, as you watch Tom Rathlin run over his left guard, but the difference here has been the power football of Nebraska. Now, they'll be able to pound that football right at you, come up with those third and three, third and four situations, which, which by the way, they have converted. UCLA, on the other hand, has been in third and 11. It's a passing team. Well, there was six yards there by Rathlin. Nothing fancy about it. Straight at you to the 19-yard line. Second down and four. Two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Six to nothing. Nebraska scored, but then they missed the point after. Sundberg and didn't fool anybody. And in particular, Ron Butler, number 86, who was sidelined most of last year with a bad back. Butler, the veteran out of Greenville, South Carolina. Penn State, after beating Iowa last week. Northwestern leading Indiana. Bill Mallory in his first year at Indiana, Alabama after losing two is winning. And Ohio State, Mike Tomczak is back for the Buckeyes. And playing well. Third down. And intended near side, and you saw an excellent reaction that time. That was Tony Phillips, 49, an ex running back who got over there. He's not big, he only weighs about 205 pounds, but he can move. Well, and you saw good evidence of it there. This is the first time, really, the UCLA defense has come up with a play and forced Nebraska to punt the football. Livingston, you saw the last one, he shanked it, a 25-yard attempt. Pitts goes back now for UCLA. Flag on the play, it's blocked. It's blocked. Scrambling inside the five, Kurt Alexander, number 14. Well, let's check the flags. There were two flags the minute the ball was snapped. It's UCLA's ball. Well, turnovers early in the football game have played. The turnovers early in the game have plagued Nebraska. Here's one more. Alexander comes right off the corner. Jet is just speed and determination. Really, he cannot be accounted for. He is not blocked. If you want it badly enough, you're going to get it. And Alexander very much wants to. Right off the corner, tremendous speed. UCLA has the athletes. He is a brother, Kermit Alexander, who's an outstanding running back for UCLA with that block punt. Here's Stevens. He fumbles. And I believe Nebraska has it back, and they do. Jim Scow, number 96, putting a pressure on Stevens, and they turn it back over. Well, he's played very, very little, as we know, but he had one fumble last week, and he vowed he would never fumble again. Now, remember, he's a young quarterback. He's excited. He is very competitive, but he's got to tuck the ball away when he's going to have people around him. You see, he still has the ball out in his left hand away from his body. The ball comes loose, and Strasburger's there to make the play. But it was Scow who separated the ball, and as you mentioned, Strasburger's made a couple of big defensive plays that came up with it. Line of scrimmage, the eighth. First down, Nebraska. Jeff Smith. And Smith will move it out to the 13-yard line. So twice now, Pat, UCLA has not capitalized. They had an interception by Price, the block punt. And neither time were they able to do anything with it. Well, again, not only have they had trouble defensively this year, their offense has been sputtering. They've only had one real good offensive drive in their first two football games. Their defense is, and John Lee, their kicker, has really let them allow to be 2-0. Already over 100 yards in the game rushing for Nebraska. And they're going to add some more. Still on his feet is Rathman, 
Rathman has the first down, just short of the 25. James Washington and Craig Rutledge make the tackle, an 11-yard gain. And there was a fullback trap that was, we talked about at the very top of the show, Gary. Tom Rathman following the blacks and blocks of his guard, Harry Griminger. You see Griminger, the left guard, come out and just kick out of the linebacker. Everybody else is looking for the pitch, which they've been running out them time after time. The linebackers ran outside, and boom, and get the ball to the fullback. Out of the replay to the sweep by Jeff Smith, advancing out to the 30-yard line. Got out there quickly. Lee Knowles made the stop. Smith out of Wichita. He came to Nebraska as a 175-pounder. Now he weighs in at about 200 pounds, and he was a weightlifter of the year for Nebraska. Nebraska, again, is in a second and two or three situation, Gary. Second and three. DeBose now in the backfield, number 22. A sophomore out of Connecticut. This is DeBose with the ball. And DeBose diving close to the first down marker. Doug Wassel and Lee Knowles made the stop. An NFL doubleheader tomorrow on CBS. Many of you will see the Redskins take on the vastly improved New England Ball Club and then a game between two fierce old rivals, the Packers and Cowboys. These and other regional games all starting with the NFL today. Be sure to check your local listings. The Packers under Forrest Gregg this year. First down on that last run, just short of the 35, and that's going to be the end of our first quarter of play. Nebraska leading six to nothing. But in the first 15 minutes, they have dominated statistically. We'll return after this commercial break. You're along with Pat Hayden and the Goodyear Blimp Columbia. High above the Rose Bowl here. Nebraska with a six to nothing lead. Nebraska has never won in California. Oh, three and one all these years. But last year they defeated UCLA 42 to 10 in Lincoln. After UCLA had a 10 to nothing early lead. Sunberg on the option. Very well diagnosed by Adam Hutchins, number 57, out of Las Vegas. That first quarter was all Nebraska. Look, the two key stats, I think, are yards rushing. 121 for Nebraska, minus 10 for UCLA. And time of possession, 10 minutes and 30 seconds for Nebraska. That's incredible. But actually, actually typical of their offense. Nebraska's made a change at offensive tackle. Mark Penning's out of there now. Tim Roth is in. Sunberg on target to Jim Thompson, number 39. A penalty flag as he breaks it inside the 45. Penalty flag all the way back, however, at the 32. Jim Thompson, who had one catch last week, and that was for a touchdown. Holding, that'll bring it back. 21-yard gain wiped out. Pat, we talked about at the top of the show the dimensional attack the Nebraska has. And it's a system that Tom Osborne's developed, a system that Bob Devaney started, and he kind of refined it. Well, it's a five-year program, really, where they bring their kids in in the first year, and they have a full-fledged freshman program. Where those kids play a five-game schedule. In the second year, their kids redshirt. In the third year, they come out, and they suit up, and they don't play. In the fourth year, they kind of mop up. Sometimes they mop up so much they play a lot. And then the fifth year, by the time the fifth year rolls around, they're playing a lot. There are 19 seniors in the Nebraska starting lineup today. And their average age is a very interesting statistic in itself. They are a veteran ball club, 22 years of age in the average. And yeah, UCLA's got a couple of defensive backs who can't even register for the draft. They're, they're looking forward to that day. Sunberg now has called a timeout. Nebraska with a 6 to nothing lead, 14-13 to go in this first half. Second down, 19 for Nebraska. They ask for that timeout. Sunberg has Kimball split to the bottom. In motion is Swanson. And Shane Swanson, the intended receiver. Update on that Georgia-Clemson game. Here's Pat O'Brien. Thank you, Gary. In Columbus, Ohio, the performance of the day is from Keith Byers, who has his third touchdown in this contest for the Buckeyes. Ohio leads 38 to 26. Let's go back to Gary and Pat. Well, that was not an update on Clemson and Georgia, but as you saw it, Ohio State. Boy, Byers is labeled this year as the fastest big running back in America. He is having an unbelievable year. Matt Stevens, two of nine for 29 yards off to a rough start and the fumble. Third down, 19, the screen. 
Scott Porter, the backup fullback, out of Nebraska City. He will not get the first down. He's out to the 30. Chucky Miller, 37, made the tackle. This play didn't get much, but watch some of the blocking in the middle of your screen. Trainer works number 57. You see 58, Harry Grimminger right there. Those, this is why Nebraska has been so successful over the years. These offensive linemen get in that program for five years, and by the fifth year, they don't make many mistakes. Here's another look at the screen play. Big, big couple of big blocks there. And Chucky Miller, 37, out of Long Beach, over to make the tackle. Livingston to punt the ball. And Pitts is back. A short punt. And UCLA almost hit it, did they? One of the men was on the field, and they did. And Nebraska has it. What happened was, one of the men down on the field were trying to locate him, could not get out of the way of the ball. It hit him. As an end result, Nebraska recovered it. Frayne, number 80, was the man who came up with the ball. Would look what like happened, Gary. It was number 32, Josh Shinnick, in the middle of the screen here, is blocking someone right there. He's on the ground. Now watch the ball. It's going to hit his back right there, and there are some Nebraska players to make the recovery. That's who it was, Josh Shinnick, who's dad, Don, of course, an outstanding player for Baltimore so many years in the National Football League. At the 29. Smith to the 25. Six-yard pickup on the play. Pitts on the stop. Back to New York. Here's Pat. All right, Pat, thanks for keeping us posted on those games in the eastern part of the country, the southeast. Now the 23-yard line, second down and four for Nebraska. Trying to capitalize on that mistake. This is Rathman. Rathman inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Let's see if he got the first down. They're going to have to measure, I believe. One more time, though, it was a second and short situation for Nebraska. Chris Block made the stop. And they are just short. It's going to be third down. Third down, less than a yard. Jeff Smith, he's turned around, but not until after he got the first down. Ron Pitts, 47 on the play, along with Chucky Miller. And so it is a first down, Nebraska. They're going to mark the ball at the 17. And a man shaken up now for UCLA. This UCLA defense has been on the field almost the entire first half, certainly the entire first quarter. It's been a matter of their offense really been in, in three plays and out. And this Nebraska offense really kind of controlling the line of scrimmage and running the ball down their throats. So the Val Love already out of the lineup. We'll be back to check the status of that injury in a moment. First down now for Nebraska. A 75,000 in the Rose Bowl. Nebraska with a 6 to nothing lead. Sundberg with Smith and Rathman in the backfield. Inside the 10 to the 4. First and goal for the Cornhuskers. Washington, number 3, made the stop. A 13-yard pickup on the play. Isn't it amazing? The more you watch Nebraska, the more you can see their tendencies. Again, the pitch play into the short side of the field. They've loved this play for years and years. But even if you know it's coming, they're, they're so efficient. And they've run the play so well for so many years, it's very difficult to stop. They're like machines up front. We're talking to UCLA coaches. You can't figure out when they're pulling, when they're not. They're so disciplined up there. First and goal from the four. Sunberg keeps, cuts, touchdown. A lot's been said about how tough it is to replace Turner Gill, but Sunberg has done a very creditable job. He is incredibly efficient, and they've won with quarterbacks like Sunberg in the past. Think of Jeff Quinn and Tom Sorley. He's in that mold. 12 to nothing. They're going for two. After missing that point after the first time. Sunberg to Blake. Jason Gamble. It's 14 to nothing.
We're going to take a look at the touchdown first of Craig Sundberg, number 15, on the option play. Now, remember, on the plays before, they had pounded the football at them. They had run Jeff Smith off tackle and wide on the pitch play into the short side of the field. The sequencing of plays by Nebraska. College football is a game of sequencing plays. One play setting up the next. Nebraska does it like nobody else. They capitalize on that mistake, and they now lead it by 14 points. 14, UCLA nothing. Sunberg doing a very excellent job of running this team. He is married. We talked about him last night. Nice. Quite a few married team players on this Nebraska unit. Kicked off for Doral. He was hit hard at the 14-yard line. Well, next week, the fight in the line eye of Illinois. Mike White's Jack Trudeau will take on Chuck Long of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Sports Saturday to follow, and Cooney against Brown. Brown's unbeaten, and Jerry Cooney who last spot Larry Holmes in June of 82. And then the Marlboro Cup from Belmont Park. That's next Saturday here on CBS. Andrews and Wiley in the backfield. Stevens still the quarterback. Andrews, nothing doing on that play. Ken Graber, who tosses quarterbacks around in practice like they're chickens, in the <laughs> estimation of defensive coordinator Chuck McBride. Choke chickens, yep. Yeah. How long do you think, Matt, Terry Donahue will go with Matt Stevens? He said that if there wasn't a lot of success, he wouldn't hesitate to change quarterbacks and go to David Norrie. Well, David Norrie is a big, strong thrower, but you really couldn't blame that last turnover on Stevens. Remember, it hit Shinnick in the back on the punt, and Nebraska brought it in for a score. But he needs some success now as Stevens back on second down. He hits his receiver across the 20 to the 22. That's Tunnell, the tight end, a four-yard pickup on the play, third down. Well, it's interesting that we saw Tunnell catch that ball. I said earlier on that I believe if UCLA is going to have a chance today that their tight end, Tunnell, and the halfback, Danny Andrews, who really is a big lead catcher, they need to catch all oh, 8-10 passes between them because of the type of coverage that Nebraska plays. He could go deep. You saw him early in the game, just miss on a long one. Third and five now. This is the shortest they've had it on a third down, believe it or not. He is buried. Strasburger, that's the third sack of the game for Nebraska. And Strasburger's playing outstanding football. And it, and it was a blitz by the inside linebackers of Nebraska on the young quarterback, Matt Stevens. You're going to see right there in the middle of your screen, number 41, Munford, and number 46, Daffer. There's nobody there to pick them up. There should be a back that picks up those linebackers, and they attack Matt Stevens. But this has been a big difference in the Nebraska defense this year is the pressure they've been able to put on the quarterback. Well, they have eight starters returning, had nine, and then lost Mike Knox. They're all big eight performers due to a knee injury. Bonafé to kick. Jeff Smith to the 45. To the 35, he may go to the 20, 15 to the 10. The fifth leading punt returner in the nation. Just took that one all the way to the 10-yard line. A 45-yard return. Ron Butler finally got it. I'll tell you what, you, Nebraska can beat you in so many different ways, and now here's one other way on a special teams. And Jeff Smith, he is determined. I'm surprised at how many tackles he is breaking. Now, he doesn't have the breakaway speed that maybe Rozier has, but somehow he's breaking an awful lot of tackles, both on punt returns and on off-tackle plays. So Jeff Smith sets the ball up at the nine-yard line. He waited patiently for Mike Rozier to head on to the pros, now getting his opportunity. And that's the system that we were talking about. Fumble to Doug DeBose, who came in there, fumbled, and UCLA has it. We have had a lot of turnovers <laughs> in this game. Well, we expected of Nebraska, actually, they had 12 coming into to get today's game, 12 fumbles. UCLA only had one. Both teams have committed two. That was Jeff Lasser, a freshman, 58, out of Houston, Texas, that came up with the ball. And that gives uh, UCLA a chance to stay in this one. Well, again, here is a pitch into the short side. But one thing about pitching the ball to a tailback, he has to take his eye off the defense. And it looked like, actually, what DeBose did there was looking at the defense when the ball was coming to him, and then he fumbled it. Ball at the eight-yard line, and penalty flags go before the snap of the ball. 
Nine minutes left in this first half. 14 to nothing, Nebraska. And this one will go against the Bruins. Well, they've had about everything bad happen to them that you can think of. Illegal procedure, offense, still first half. An illegal procedure, moves it inside the five to the four. Notre Dame is beating up on Colorado. Colorado, by the way, is UCLA's opponent next week out in Boulder. Irish, after escaping that near miss against Michigan State, rolling today. First down, 14. Stevens from the end zone. Somehow he gets it out. Al Wilson, number 88, a junior college transfer, made a 13-yard grab. And, Pat, I don't think he even saw him. There were men up in his face when he threw the football. Well, it was a pretty gutsy call, too, by Terry Donahue, with a sophomore has not played much for you. You're backed up in your own end zone and down 14 points, but he called it, and he got it done. Al Wilson from Matt Stevens. Good execution by Stevens. They're a yard short. They needed 14, and they got 13. Second down. This is Primus. He has the first down. He has waited a long time to play. He's been hurt all year. They think he has excellent potential. That's a 10-yard pickup, and they are out of the hole. Sunberg and Osborne. Sunberg, they relate him to some of the quarterbacks they've had in the past, like Quinn. And Tom Sorley. Yep. Washington. We had them last week on CBS. Houston is 1-0 going to that game. First down. Stevens gives the premise again. And maybe a half yard at best. UCLA, after Andrews and Wiley, has a very, very young backfield. They're playing freshman, redshirt freshman. This guy, a redshirt freshman. Now he'll leave the ball game. So UCLA will have a second down nine from the 28. Wiley and Andrews now in the backfield. Tunnell. Tunnell might be the best athlete on this team. As we mentioned, he was a fullback last year, moved to tight end. And uh, the Chevrolet announcement here by Pat Hayden. Near the conclusion of today's CBS Sports College Football broadcast, Gary Bender and I will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each of the teams. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Very well done, Mr. Hayden. Thank you, 31. Third down, six. Stevens, and he hopped that one to Durrell. One of the few times in the last two series that he's had any protection, but that time a little short, it'll bring up fourth down. He looked a little surprised, actually, that he got some protection, but again, I'm underscoring the situation. UCLA is third and eight too much here in the first half. You're not going to beat Nebraska being third and eight. They're going to have to run the ball with a little bit more efficiency. Well, to just substantiate what you say, UCLA is 0 for 5 on third downs. What a fight to punt. Cornell Gatson, check that. Swanson and DeBose back for Nebraska. This is DeBose. And at the 31-yard line, the Cornhuskers will have it. 14 to nothing. Nebraska, 38-yard punt that time. Nebraska has the football with 6.57 left in this first half. 14 to nothing. The Cornhuskers with the lead. Sunberg on a little delay up the middle. Jeff Smith carrying the ball. We understand that DeVal Love, the offensive All-American candidate tackle for UCLA, sprained his ankle. It's questionable that he will return. And then Joe Gasser, their outstanding safety, who's been sidelined with a shoulder separation, re-injured his shoulder again, separated again. UCLA had a number of players injured in last year's Nebraska game as well. I think three or four guys got carried off the field. Second down and eight. Mishandled snap, but Sunberg is on it. Good reaction that time. 
one concern we had, or a concern that Terry Donahue had, he needed penetration by the UCLA front. Now watch this Nebraska front. There is no penetration by the UCLA defense. The surge of that off offensive line is giving Jeff Smith and Craig Sundberg an opportunity to use their skills. Trainowitz at 6'6", Pat, you watch him. He almost looks offside when he's snapping the ball. A lot like Dave Remington a few years ago. He gets into his man almost before the rest of the line leaves. Sundberg back, third down and eight. Complete. That'll be a first down catch by Jeff Smith. Ron Pitts defending, 16-yard pickup. This is nice touch. Top of the screen, number 28, Jeff Smith, a tailback. We've seen him run the ball so well, but here he runs a little seam route. It's a zone defense. There's some dead spots in that zone, and a nice touch by Sundberg over one defender and in front of another. A 16-yard gain sets it up with the 49 of Nebraska. That's Jim Thompson, 39 in motion. We're going to have a pitch back to Sunberg. He's going to run with it. Uh, the boy had Jim Thompson open downfield. Steve Jarecki, 99, reacted very well on that play, a four-yard pickup on it. And you always expect in the course of any game for Osborne <laughs> to do something out of the ordinary. Here's another look at 39, Jim Thompson. Again, it's a trick play where they pitch the ball to the tailback, and then he throws it back to Sunberg. He's running wide open here. A free safety, uh, Washington, tries to come over and pick him up, but he wouldn't have caught him if Sunberg could have gotten rid of the ball. Remember that Bumbarewski play that they pulled in the Orange Bowl against Miami? They always have a little trick play. Oklahoma, fake field goal. And now they try something a little different, and this time, Straight ahead, Rathman, and Block was there. Chris Block, one of the things they told us yesterday was he had to be an anchor point, and he was on this play. And that's precisely right. Here we finally got some penetration by this UCLA front, and that's why you only had a one-yard gain by Rathman. You can see the penetration by 78 Block. That's what you need right here in order to stop this Nebraska offense, disrupt that timing. So they have a third down and five. With a blitz, Sunberg avoids it, and he completes the pass beautifully to Todd Frame, the tight end. 12 yard pickup on a first down, and Sunberg showed some poise on that play. I'll tell you what, Todd Frayne was well covered by 30 Craig Rutledge of UCLA. And actually, Frayne showed great concentration because Rutledge came over his shoulder, and Frayne still was able to catch the football. Again, Nebraska throwing the ball extremely well. Lenoles now with a 9 to nothing lead. In motion, Thompson on the first down. Smith. That time, Neil Delicano. We haven't called his name very often. The All-American candidate out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, made the stop. He's been a big play performer for the Euclids. He sure has. He has four sacks this year. It's Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator of UCLA, one of two defensive coordinators. He said, handles the secondary. He said we have to be sound. We have to somehow cause some turnovers. There have been some turnovers, but they haven't capitalized on them. We're going to have to be more aggressive now. Sunberg on the option. Coming over, Tommy Taylor, the Chattanooga Choo Choo man out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he probably runs as well as any of the linebackers they have. There's been some outstanding things predicted for him. Flashes of brilliance. And at the 32-yard line, there he is. He's got a nice little smile, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Tell you, these guys out west, they know how to smile, don't they? They're used the to be in front of the cameras, you know? <laughs> I, I know, I've been around you. <laughs> Third down now, eight. Sunberg, Shane Swanson, and Swanson inside the 20 to the 18, another first down. 15-yard pass completion. You think they're efficient? That was their 10th third down attempt, and they converted on seven of them. But what makes Nebraska so difficult, you think they're going to run, and boom, they can throw the ball just like this to Shane Swanson, who saw a lot of that last week with Washington. Did you know that he is on the rodeo circuit, and he was a cap roping champion in Nebraska? As a matter of fact, I did. You did. <laughs> Jeff Smith to the 10. Ron Pitts knocks him out of bounds, and this is relentless, methodical, punishing. And how would you like to be a UCLA defensive player right now? You've been on the field the entire first half. They've been pounding at you all first half. What's it going to be like in the fourth quarter for those defensive linemen? 
We mentioned at the start of the show that Smith was ahead of Rozier's pace of a year ago. And you know what Rozier did? He ended up with over 2,000 yards. You get to play in that uh, tailback spot, they knock some people down in front of you. Boy, I tell you what, it really is incredible what they have done, what Tom Osborne has done in Nebraska. Here we go again. Smith inside the five yard line. Now, last time they were down here, we saw Nebraska inside the 10 yard line run the pitch play into the boundary. Then remember they came back with Sunberg on the option to the wide side of the field. But don't forget that fullback trap. Again, the best trapping team in America. Second and goal now just inside the four yard line. 2-11 left in the first half. Nebraska with a 14 to nothing lead. In motion to Smith, straight ahead, touchdown, Tom Rapplin. The sequence of plays by Nebraska, this was the fullback trap. You see all the action, a big hole, a tremendous block by 58 Harry Griminger, the left guard who trapped that linebacker. That was the play. Watch the left guard right there in the middle of your screen, number 58, boom. He tracks the, traps the crisp block, number 78. There's no, what, no nothing but green for Tom Rathman. Levinston, who missed his first attempt on the point after, and then they went for two to get it back. Now to attempt his second. Sunberg to hold. This time it's hooking left on him, but he kept it in there. 21 to nothing, and you are fast beginning to realize why Nebraska is ranked number one in the country. Nebraska. 21 to nothing, Nebraska. After a 69-yard drive, Rathman from four yards out scoring. And he kicked that one out of bounds. It's going to come to the 30-yard line over the end zone. One more look. Actually, we talked about this trap play. Here you see the right guard double down with the nose and block that linebacker, and the left guard is going to come out and trap that linebacker as he tries to fill the gap. Now, that was what they scored, what Nebraska scored on with Rathman just a moment ago, a big gaping hole because of the terrific block by number 58, Harry Griminger. There was no one there to make a stop on Rathman because the defensive line was charging. They were aggressive. It was an easy block for Griminger. Now, as we mentioned, the new rule this year, if you kick the ball out of the end zone on the fly, it's a penalty. Brings it out to the 30, and that's where UCLA has it. Livingston got into that one too well. As Danny Andrews got a yard, and that's it. Nebraska, offensively, has had the ball, it seems like, almost the entire first half. But they've had it over 19 minutes. UCLA, a little over eight minutes. One thirty-nine left in this first half. Well, welcome to Los Angeles, Gary. That's the LA kind family. of guy. Yes, I don't think I'd like that job. <laughs> Not tough enough. Second and nine now for the Bruins. Wiley is wrapped up. Danny Noonan, 95. Bill Weber, 87. And I'm telling you, they just shut it down. The Nebraska defense was so maligned last year because the offense was so good, but they have really come on to playing so much better this year. You see a whole slew of Nebraska defenders right there. 87, Bill Weber, who's played so well this first half. Nowhere for Wiley to run. Timeout, Nebraska. They have one left at 107. They'd like to get the football again. O'Brien, Pat O'Brien, and Era Parsigian, the coach, will be with us with scores and highlights. Some of the games is... Developing in the Big Ten, of course, that Georgia Clemson game. This Nebraska defense, you talked about it, Pat. Last year they were they were young. This year with eight starters returning. They have such depth that they alternate their front line of five guys. And Chuck McBride's the first to tell you that we play with enthusiasm. Well, they were maligned last year because they only paled in comparison, but because their offense was so good. But they have done a couple of things this year. They've gone with a four-man rush in passing situations rather than a three-man rush, which means they're putting more pressure on the quarterback. Matt Stevens can attest to that. And they're playing a little bit more simple type of defense. There are not as many mental mistakes by this defensive unit this season. Another thing that we should point out, and Chuck McBride, their defensive coordinator, put it this way, said, last year, our offense would score so quickly that our defense was on the field more than they wanted to be. That's a head coach's dream, I want to tell you. But this year, with a little more of a sustained effort, they're taking some time and keeping their defense off the field. Third down, 11.
seven yards to go. And Strasburger from the other side, fifth sack. Weber and Strasburger, the bookend type defensive ends, have just been hammering Stevens. Well, what happens to a young quarterback, too, Gary, is that after you get hammered so much and you've had made a couple of mistakes, you can get a little bit numb and you get a little bit too conservative and you're concerned. Matt Stevens looked like he looks like he's a little tentative to me right now. Close personal friend of Gary Bender. I have a lot of friends in Nebraska. <laughs> you have a lot of friends everywhere, Gary. Is that what you want me to say? <laughs> We have a timeout now. Nebraska, they still want the football again. They've used another timeout. They have none remaining, and 59 seconds left in this first half. Sooners of Oklahoma have been off to an impressive start, and they've continued that impressive start. Look at this. They defeated Pittsburgh and Stanford. They were tough on Pittsburgh, weren't they? They've gone back to the wishbone. Yeah. Gary Switzer has gone back to something that he... Knows a lot about it. That wishbone has really been tough. Stanford, after losing to Oklahoma, turned around and beat Illinois. So you've got a young quarterback up at Stanford. John Pay is going to be a very, very good one. Smith is back for the punt from Bonafé. Bonafé coming in here is averaging 46 yards. That is Bill Weber, and it's going to go out of bounds. They're going to mark it at the 47-yard line. So both teams now have blocked punts. And hasn't Weber been a factor this first half? We saw him get a couple of sacks here in the first quarter. We saw him be around the football. Now he blocks a punt. Number 87, Bill Weber right up the middle. Weber and Strasburger are just trying to outdo each other. One guy makes a big play at one end, and then this guy comes back and makes one. Sunberg, Jennifer Gamble, defending on the play, was Herb Welch, number two. Jason Gamble, a freshman who really is a second semester freshman. He came in and had spring practice in Santa Barbara. Let's take a look at number two, Herb Welsh. Now, there's some complaints here that there was pass interference. It looks like he bumped right through and pushed right through Jason Gamble. It looked like it was interference. The official was there and did not call it, however. Bring it down 10, a stoppage as we're going to have timeout now called by UCLA. For 45 seconds left. They have two left in the first half. At halftime, Pat Era and also echoes from the past, Lindsey Nelson. By the way, Lindsey Nelson is going to be introduced and inducted into the New York Mets Baseball Hall of Fame. And he has a feature on the Rose Bowl. Kind of an interesting combination of players and coaches. And we really want to congratulate Lindsey for just a well-deserved honor among the many that he's had in his illustrious career. It's amazing how many people around the country remember Lindsey from the Met days. Everybody's always asking him about his jackets. Well, remember the Miracle Mets? He was doing the broadcast that year. Alabama, Crimson Tide 0 and 2 under Ray Perkins, but they're going to end that losing streak. So Nebraska with 45 seconds left in the first half, second down 10 for the 47 of UCLA. They have a 21 to nothing lead. The boast in the backfield with Rathman. 32, 36. Dunberg runs in with a grasp, and that's the first sack. David Randall. Out of Dallas, a transfer from SMU. And a big sack by the UCLA defense may have taken Nebraska out of field goal range unless they can come up with something here in 26 seconds. Sunberg, far side, and Welch over there was trying to align himself for the interception. Swanson, the intended receiver. There's a penalty flag at the 42-yard line. That's the kind of play you got to be careful with. You're throwing it away, and a guy's sitting over there, and he takes it and goes the other way with Boy, it. Boy, I've seen that happen a lot. Illegal procedure against the Cornhuskers. Pat, we talked about Nebraska being so tough. What about Oklahoma State? Oklahoma, the Big Eight's got three powerhouses this year. It's interesting. Terry Donahue was telling us what a physical conference it is. You, when you think of Big Eight football, you think of linemen, you think of defense, you think of oh, some option football teams. Right. They've got a few of them this year. Oklahoma State is very, very tough. Oklahoma State, they had a tough battle, but it's oh, the same team UCLA. that pushed UCLA. That's right. But they are 3-0. Off 
to a fine start under Pat Jones, their new coach. Coming up and making the catch at the 22-yard line is Ron Pitts. 35-yard punt that time. 16 seconds left. Livingston not happy with that punt at all. You wonder whether we're going to see David Norrie perhaps carrying the second half. Well, Terry Donahue's got some retooling. What are you going to do? You go in the halftime down 21 to nothing? You need an arm, and they say that David Norrie has that kind of arm, the touch. Remember we talked about that early in the week? David Norrie's a big, tall, strong-armed guy. 6'5", to be exact. He was the number two quarterback, without a doubt, coming into fall, but then Stevens kind of narrowed the distance down and got the start today. Andrews out across the 30 to the 32. Daffer and McCashlin combine on the tackle. But in no way can you blame this entire first half on Matt Stevens, of course, if it's been a combination of a superb defense by Nebraska as well as an overpowering offense. It's not certainly not Matt Stevens entirely his fault, but sometimes a changing quarterback can lift your team. That was a 10-yard run by Andrews, and that's their longest run from the line of scrimmage. Maybe they can build on that. You look for something now, don't oh. you, when you're down 21 to nothing? You look for any kind of hope. But when you're a throwing football team, you have a chance against anybody. There's number nine, David Norrie, like you said, 6'5". He's out of Portland, Oregon. He was the guy that Homer Smith kind of handpicked when he went out to recruit. Homer's very high on him, but he's only thrown one pass this season as well. And that was for an interception. There goes that theory. Yeah. <laughs> With that run a moment ago by Andrews, they're now even in the rushing department. They had minus rushing yardage prior to that last play. First down now after the run by Andrews. 11 seconds left in the first half. Andrews again. And Andrews across the 40 to the 41. Ken Shed, 99, made the stop. And they're going to call for another timeout. They stopped the clock with two seconds. UCLA still wants another crack at it. Now here's where the rule change on the pass interference really comes into play. In times past, you throw the ball into the end zone, hope for interference, and you get the ball on the one-yard line. But the new rule in college football is that it's just 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. Tomorrow now, don't forget, an NFL doubleheader. Washington Redskins, New England. Preserving fire out of Nebraska was the Patriots' number one draft pick. And then the Packers and Cowboys. Remember those outstanding battles they had year after year, the Vince Lombardi era? I'm too young. Well, that's probably right. Never thought about that. You remember, of course, when Nebraska was here in 1941, don't you? <laughs> huh? No, I don't recall that, as a matter of fact. Weren't you serving in our armed forces at that time? <laughs> Oh, this guy, Terry Donahue, comes from a background of playing in the Rose Bowl as a player. He won. They beat Michigan State, who was ranked number one that year. Came back as an assistant coach under Dick Vermeil and won. And he's won twice as head coach. So he's had a lot of success here. Going for all of it is Stevens. Nobody back there but Nebraska. Intercepted by Brett Clark. And so at halftime, Nebraska with a 21 to nothing lead. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. Lay and Pat, a lot was said that Turner Gill was irreplaceable, but Craig Sundberg's done a pretty good job today. Well, he's been efficient, and that's exactly what Tom Osborne wants out of his quarterback. He's run the football team well, and we saw him run that option play down there for the touchdown a little earlier in the football game. Now, again, this is a play where it was set up by some power football. He threw a couple of passes on the drive. We saw Jeff Smith off tackle, but then he has enough foot speed to find a little opening, duck into it, and get into the end zone. Matt Stevens, first starting call due to the injury to Steve Bono, and He's had a tough afternoon, but Nebraska's put tremendous pressure on him. Well, they have been in his face all day, which has really led to his statistics. And I think he is a little concerned. He looks a little bit numb right now. Remember when they had that mistake, that critical fumble? They had the ball down on the six-yard line of Nebraska and couldn't convert. Here you see Matt Stevens dropping back. Remember, after the turnover of the block punt, Stevens dropped back to pass after his fake. Really, we started to scramble, which is okay, but you have to tuck the ball away. Now, we've also talked about perhaps Terry Donahue making a change. We talked about David Dory perhaps coming in the second half. 
You know, at the start of the show, we talked about the I Am Hips, the Jarvis Red Wines, the Mike Rozier. Now you got to add Jeff Smith. What a job he did in the first half. He has been absolutely incredible. We saw him return a punt for a big what, 45 yards in the punt return, as you can take a look at that right now. But what surprised me is how many tackles he is breaking. You see him here. We were told that he was a five and six yard runner, but here you're going to see him exhibit some pretty good speed and outrun some UCLA defenders. But he's hurt them with punt returns, running the football off tackle. He's caught a couple of key passes. He's really done a lot. Well, Donahue's got to retool his team. He's got to get something going. Perhaps David Norris, the answer he's going to have to find out in the second half. We'll be back for the second half of the. CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by Chevrolet. A panoramic view of Pat Hayden's neighborhood. <laughs> it's I read this yeah. <laughs> That's right. Nebraska 21. UCLA nothing. Livingston to kick off. Sherrard is back deep along with Willie Anderson. It's going to be Anderson, a freshman redshirt. Gets it out to the 20-yard line, and I believe we're going to have a new quarterback. We saw David Norrie warming up, do you think? No, it looks like he sent in Matt Stevens. He was over there talking with Terry Donnie. We just sent the play in. There he is. We just Norrie was warming up. And Look at Here's this. the number of plays. This is an amazing statistic, Gary. Nebraska's won 50, the UCLA's 28. Now, most teams run 70 plays during the course of a football game, but Nebraska, over the last couple of years, has averaged around 95. And they're well on their way to that. They're halfway there now from the 20-yard line. Danny Andrews. Andrews ended the first half running successfully, this time out to the 22-yard line. Bill Weber, Mark Dom combined on the stop for Nebraska. You know, one of the amazing things to me is Homer Smith kept telling us he's the offensive coordinator at UCLA. What a good receiver that Danny Andrews was and what a big league catcher he was. But we have not seen him catch the ball here today. Well, he dropped one, remember? That's right. A little flare pass that got away from him. But he thinks he's a big league catcher. That was the first thing he pointed out. He catch the ball as well as any back they've had. Wiley and Andrews in the backfield. Second down. Nine yards to go. In motion, Young, Stevens, scrambling out of there. Nice touch on the ball, and there's the man we were talking about, Andrews, to the 30-yard line. They're going to be a yard short of the first down. Mark Mumford, 41 over there to make the stop. Stevens that time, using some of his mobility. He can run well. Got outside the rush. And he has a yard to go, third down coming up. Stevens, by the way, out of high school, was rated the fourth top quarterback in the nation. So his credentials have been impressive. But today, he's struggling. And UCLA on a third down. They're 0 of 6 thus far in the game. Fumble. Wiley, I think, got it back. He got it back, believe it or not. Brian Wiley has it, and it's a first down. I got it. You take it. Brian Wiley, again, as you mentioned, their first third and short all game. He busts through the line. The ball comes right out. Remember, he had broken his wrist last year. He still wears a lot of padding around his arms, but the ball fell on the ground. It bounced back up right to him. Brett Clark had his hand on his helmet. He could not believe he lost it. That's the biggest game today for him, 15 yards. On the 45. James Premis carrying the ball. There's a penalty flag. So he just gets across the 45-yard line. And Mark Mumford there again on the stop. Well, UCLA has just not been able to do much on first down here, Gary. Going to be holding. And yeah. it looked like Mark Mannon, 56, the left side guard for UCLA. That'll momentarily stall this one. Interesting first half, Terry Downey, who really wasn't wearing the headsets. Early on the offensive team, penalized from the style of the foul. Still first down. Well, he, as he doesn't have it on now, but he'll get the place from Homer Smith, who is in the booth and sends him down. He calls him. But he, I think he's concerned with his offense. He wants to talk directly with Homer right now, as you can see, as he puts the headphones back on. First and 20 after the penalty. Spockman giving chase, and he got it. Chris Spockman, who did not play high school football until his senior year. He was an outstanding basketball player, Bishop Mayage in Kansas City, Kansas. That's the sixth sack by Nebraska. 
One of the very few underclassmen playing for Nebraska. Florida State, as we mentioned, scoring well, a lot of points. Can you that. believe they've shut out Bernie Kosar? I can't believe the schedule Miami has. Though. Goodness. Murder. It is murder. Second and 26. From the shotgun this time. And a whistle stopping everything. At the 12-16 mark, UCLA has called timeout. They trail by 21. When you're ahead 21-0 as Nebraska is, your defensive secondary can play a little bit more conservatively. Look at the defensive backs and linebackers of Nebraska, how deep they're playing. And it, it, uh, Matt Stevens just is not going to have a chance to get the ball downfield, so then it even becomes more important to get the ball to his tight end and his halfback, Denny Andrews. And the point is, you can't get it all back at once anyway. That's precisely right. They have two downs here to pick up the first down. That timeout they used, it could come back to haunt them. Calling a timeout at the 12-16 mark of the third quarter. You don't want to give them away that early. But they had some kind of a mix-up. Second down, 24. Stevens gets rid of it to Danny Andrews. And Andrews out to the 37-yard line, still considerably short of the first down. That's a seven-yard pickup. Munford again on the stop. And we have a man shaken up for Nebraska. That is Munford. Again, another thought about and look at the defensive secondary of Nebraska. Look how deep the defensive back you just cannot get the ball downfield. Remember it's second and 26 now. There's nowhere to go but he does dump the ball to his halfback Danny Andrews which is the right smart move by Matt Stevens but a tremendous pressure again on Stevens. This is Mumford out of Littleton Colorado leading tackler coming into this game and what they've actually ended up doing is starting Mumford because of the injury to Mike Knox. They're all big eight performer. Mumford they think has greatness ahead of him. Tomorrow again, the NFL doubleheader on CBS Sports, starting with the NFL today, then the Redskins, the Patriots, the Packers against the Cowboys. Cardinals are off to a good start. And, of course, Los Angeles, Jeff Kemp's going to get a starting nine. The young man from Dartmouth, it is, it's his first start, and I, I think he's going to do okay. They're going to get you back out there yet with the Rams, huh? I doubt that. Well, this is quite a battle in the West, isn't it? California and Texas, along with Minnesota. And the Angels with a lead. And Minnesota ahead of Cleveland 4-1. No, that's a final. And here's Kansas City winning. George Brett had a grand slam last night. My Angels will be there. You think? Third down now, 17, as Munford leaves the field. Stevens, Andrews. He waited for him to clear, and he completed it for 26 yards. Very well thrown. That's a good point, too, Gary. He did weigh the patience of Matt Stevens now. He's bouncing back some, from some adversity. He's got his team moving now, but he's waiting, waiting, waiting for his halfback, Danny Andrews. And we talked about the coverage of Nebraska. The way you're going to beat them is with your halfback and your tight end. Stevens read the coverage beautifully and got the ball to Andrews. That was the missing ingredient in that first half. Andrews catching the ball. This is Premis. Premis to the 35, maybe just inside it. UCLA now enjoying some success. They score in this drive, Pat. And there's a lot of time left. They're very much in this football game. Well, just remember that football, and I think particularly college football, is very much an emotional football game. UCLA is playing at home, but this crowd has not had an opportunity to cheer much today. A score now would really lift this football team. From the 34, second down, five for the Euclids. Oh, Tunnell, the tight end, fired up. Remember earlier they were moving well and they had a holding penalty. Now they have the move up in the offensive line. Mistakes really hurting. That was what a field goal by Butler that won it for Georgia. A distance of 60 yards. That's incredible. Right Illegal procedure on the offense. Miami hasn't scored. Keith. Mike Tomzak had a big game today. So Keith Byers as well. Penn State. Boy, scored some points. Houston. That's a surprise. Well, they're running out of that veer, and that's tough to defense. Oklahoma still leading 34-7. That is a final. Just a final, and as we mentioned, Oklahoma State sliding by San Diego State. I'm picking them as a sleeper of the year. Here is Stevens. Beautiful catch. That is Mike Young, who went airborne. All of a sudden, there's some life in this UCLA offense. 
an interesting call, too, by Terry Donahue. He, the first time he rolled Matt Stevens out. That is a first down. They had to wait. It was a first down catch, an 11-yard pickup. As you well know, one way of getting away from the rush of a defense is to roll your quarterback out, and that's what we saw Stevens do, do there to get away from the rush, give him a little bit more opportunity to find Mike Young. There's the play selection. Look at the runs by Nebraska, a little more evenly balanced by UCLA. Premise goes out of bounds at the 27. Well, Air Donahue has changed the complexion of UCLA the last couple of years. They threw the ball as well as anybody in the country with Tom Ramsey last year with Rick Neuheisel. Now some of the flashes of that starting to appear here in this third quarter. And, and give some credit to Homer Smith, their offensive coordinator, who came in here in 1980 and really made UCLA much more difficult to defend. There's another score update on the Washington. Yeah, Houston's lead now has been uh, whittled down, and Washington's leading 10 to 7. Stevens. Complete to Byron Wiley to the 19-yard line. Dave Burke made the stop. Eight, maybe nine yards on the play. Going to be very close. And, Pat, you see him stretching them a little bit now. They're making the defenders really cover a large area of the field. It's a very good point. In the first half, all we saw Matt Stevens do was drop back into the pocket. Now on two successive pass plays, he has rolled out to get away from the rush, put a little bit more pressure on the defensive ends of Nebraska, and there he dumped the ball off short to one of his backs again. That's Norm Anderson standing alongside Donahue on the sideline. Third down, less than a yard. A big fullback, Wiley, has the first down for UCLA. Dave Burke, Mark Dom made the stop for Nebraska. Play selection inside the 20-yard line is so critical. And remember, UCLA has had difficulty thus far this year putting the ball in the end zone from the 20-yard line in. John Lee, in their first football game, kicked six field goals. From the... 16 is where it will be. First down. Paco Craig now in at a wide receiver position. Stevens giving up to Wiley. Wiley the senior out of Harbor City, California. Dom made the stop along with Chris Bachman. The biggest difference on this drive for UCLA has been their success on first down. There they ran the ball on first down. They picked up, oh, probably four yards in the first half. We saw them get very little on first down. They got three on this one, second and seven. Twelfth play coming up. This is the longest sustained drive of the game for UCLA. Young, Gerard split up. Mel Farr is now the fullback, the freshman. Stevens to Andrews. Andrews does not get to the 10. It's going to be third down and still a good five yards to go. Spockman, Dom on the tackle again. In the first half in this situation, Nebraska ran again that kind of defense where they double covered their outside receivers. We saw Matt Stevens try to get the ball to his, half, his tight end in the first half, and that's what he's going to need to do here in a third and five. Third down five, 8.50 left in the third quarter. Young, Sherrod split out. Stevens. Tanell tried to make the catch. There's a penalty flag at the 12-yard line. Strasburger again dropping off in that defensive end spot was over there, showing his speed and quickness. Let's see what the penalty's about. Holding. Now there's that self-destructing mode they've been in in this entire drive. You're really right. It was Dave Bear in the center on the nose guard, Ken Graber. He just grabbed him from behind, and it really is self-destructing. I thought Stevens did a superb job that time, even throwing the football. He had to stop short and find his man and get rid of it. Avoided the rush, bought himself a little bit more time. So the penalty will short-circuit things for a moment. Brings it back out to the 21-yard line. They need to get something out of this drive if they have to settle for the field goal even. They've got to get on the board. Third down, 16. Almost 
the penalty flag. Paco Craig, the intended receiver. Let's see if we can sort this one out. Brett Clark defending on the play. Number 26, Paco Craig. He's right there at the top of the screen. He's just going to run a little simple little post pattern. It's a zone route, but they're Brett Park number Clark. Number 10, the official. Now, they call pass interference there. I did not see it. Now, with the pass interference in the end zone, it comes to the two-yard line this year rather than the one. That is the change. We'll wait for the explanation on it. Paco Craig has not played that much this year. In fact, he hadn't caught a ball coming into the game. Freshman out of Riverside, California. Now, this must be illegal use of hands, not pass interference. We got a five-yard illegal use of hands. Right, it was an illegal use of hands, not pass interference, because it really did not look like pass interference. But right there, the illegal use of hands, he bumped him. It's five yards and a first down. That's the big point. It is an automatic first down. Even though you're not at the two, you do have a first down at the 16-yard line. Well, you didn't say it, there wasn't there. It was the illegal use of the hands instead. Stevens again. And out of bounds is Young, and he hit that concrete abutment hard. There's padding up above, but he landed below it. And he's shaken up. I don't care how many pads you have on, that concrete Boy. hurts. You know, they put a lot of this concrete in here to support, believe it or not, for earthquake prevention. Don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> the, all the effort of Mike Young, number 18. This is the second time, actually, he's caught a ball and made a very tough catch and out of bounds with good touch by Matt Stevens, the quarterback. The simple little fade route inside the 20s, defending is number 11, Neil Harris. The ball's over his shoulder. He's concentrating. He's obviously out again, but whap. Actually, he missed the padding. If you That's what I meant. Yeah, it's up above, but not below. Bad choice for a landing. Well, we have a delay in the action. We're going to take a break. Nebraska with a 21 to nothing lead being helped by his roommate Steve Bono who could not play today and he's very very groggy but he's up and walking as he hit that abruptment you know the one thing Pat this does to you it kind of hurts your momentum a little bit you're going well and all this delay yeah, you're absolutely right but let's take another look at Mike Young number 18 as he tries the tremendous concentration look at his eyes he is following that ball all the way then whap right into the support there to the cement I don't know why they don't have a pad a little bit lower I bet they will next time I guarantee you they will Second down, 10. David Clinton, 19, is in at a wide receiver. He's only 5'7". Stevens rolling that way, being chased by Scow. Tough throw to make running that way for a right-hander. Boy, you are absolutely right. You could never get his shoulders turned upfield to deliver the ball. So it's third down. That's where they were earlier before that uh, illegal use of the hands that kept their drive going. Tunnell will now come into the lineup, tied in. Looking at Mike Young. He, uh, as a senior, has really been a leader on this ball club, as you might expect. But more importantly, he and Bono were the roommates, and they really was his favorite target. Third and ten. Over the top. Gerard broken up at the last moment. That is Dennis Watkins, 27. Watkins out of Chicago. They use him as a fifth back, and he made a play. Right, it was nickel coverage by Nebraska. Dennis Wa uh, Watkins, another one of those walk-ons in the Nebraska program. It's Watkins versus Sherrard. Sherrard is 6'2", has got pretty good leaping ability, and that's all you're trying to do on this, this play. You throw the ball up, and you hope your receiver can out jump him. But Watkins was equal to the task, saw the ball, and just knocked it away from Sherrard. So John Lee will attempt a 34-yard field goal. He is 9 of 9. He had 6 in the first game against San Diego State. Clinton to hold. And Lee's kick is on the way. It's good. From 34 yards away, the Bruins are on the scoreboard. They trail 21 to 3. UCLA has come back a little bit in this game with three points on that 63 yard drive. Stevens gain, gaining some confidence making that Nebraska secondary scramble a little bit.
John Melton, one of the assistant coaches, Chuck McBride in the background. They call them the Black Shirts defense for the Cornhuskers. Potter will be kicking off for UCLA as DeVos and Miles are back deep for Nebraska. He's had trouble keeping this ball in play, and he got it in this time. It'll come back to the 20. Let's go to New York now. Let's join Pat O'Brien. Florida State, they do some exciting things. From the 20-yard line, Nebraska, Tom Rathman. In this half now, UCLA has had 15 snaps. Nebraska with their first, and now they got to see if their defense is up to what their offense has done in this third quarter. You know, Nebraska's offense really is momentum killers, too, the way they're so methodical. You know, here you think UCLA finally has got something going. They got some momentum. But who knows? Nebraska might be on the field till prime time tonight. That's an excellent <laughs> At least until we get off the air, anyway. <laughs> Second down, four. This is Paul Miles, a junior out of Princeton, New Jersey. The fastest eye back that they have. He has the blazing speed. That time, Lee Knowles and Ron Butler, the two senior linebackers, combined for the tackle, and it comes to a third down. Benning is in there now. You see Benning, number 73, 6'6", 290. He and Tim Roth have been alternating that left tackle. Third down three. Miles, and he's not going to get it. Doug Wassell, a freshman out of Georgetown, Pennsylvania, and this man, Delicano, made sure that he didn't get the first down. And there's a lot of time in this football game, 6.34 in the third quarter. Livingston to punt the ball. Ron Pitts will go back for the Bruins. 21-3, Nebraska. He had a beauty. Beautiful punt. 15 is Pitts. He'll get to the 24, and UCLA will have the ball for the second time in the second half. Well, next Saturday, the Fighting Illini of Illinois, the defending Big Ten champions against the Iowa Hawkeyes at Kennick Stadium in Iowa. That is a tough place to play football. You better be ready. And then also, Jerry Cooney will make his long-awaited return to the ring against unbeaten Phil Brown. All next week here on CBS. Stevens to Andrews. Andrews out to the 30. Isn't it interesting, Pat, how you start throwing the ball well, how the running game picks up? It really is. Because then you give your linebackers a little bit more to be concerned about. And they are running. They have to stay at home a little bit more. It frees. Watch the linebackers now. Now when you're running the ball, they have to stay at home. And what do you do next? Then you run some play-action passes and get your tight end or Danny Andrews out behind him. Six-yard pickup to the 30-yard line. Busted play. Stevens trying to somehow get something out of it, and he was hit hard, and he released the ball, getting up slowly. But he is resourceful. I'll tell you what, he, he had took no a choice. Loss, did he? He? Well, he took a, he, he prevented a large loss. <laughs> when you're desperate, you can get pretty resourceful. I would assume. You do almost anything. <laughs> it's like, who me? I don't want this football. Third down and four, and that's not the time to have a busted play. Primus in the backfield. Stevens under pressure, and that is the seventh sack of the afternoon. Graber and Stuckey were there. Big defensive play by Nebraska. Again, the momentum we thought may have been changing to UCLA. They get a third and three situation. They haven't had too many of those today. And the next thing you know, there's another good pass rush. But remember here, and they're dropping back again. Remember the, the drive earlier, they had some success, was getting Matt Stevens out away from the rush by rolling him out. Swanson and Rob Schnitzler go back for this punt. There's the seven sacks. Bonafé hit it high. Swanson at the 29-yard line, and that's it. Fine 
line down there was Scott Franklin, number 87. 48-yard punt, one-yard return. Gary Bender along with Pat Hayden, 442 left in the third quarter. Nebraska, they 21-3 lead, and Nebraska had the ball earlier, didn't get a first down. Now they get another shot at it from their own 30. Number 21, Miles, is the high back. Sundberg on the roll. Complete to Shane Swanson. That'll be a first down, a 13-yard pickup to Swanson. Swanson trying to replace Irving Fryer. I'm not sure you really do that, but Swanson is more than adequate in his own way. You know, if you're Tom Osborne, you are concerned a little bit about your offense. You're only leading 21 to 3 at a point in the third quarter. You obviously cannot sit on the football, so he's got to get his offense moving again. Here's a first down call and he runs up, uh, throws a pass to Sunbrook for a big first down. Get straight ahead to Rathman, and Rathman runs into a lot of congestion to the 45. And there is Nori. We saw him warming up to begin the second half and didn't come in, so I don't know if this means anything or not. Well, actually, it looked like Matt Stevens got hit on that sack once. He looked a little, got up very, very slowly, looked a little shaken up. Six foot five out of Portland, Oregon. He has what he calls a distance finder in Homer Smith's <laughs> vernacular. In other words, he What's can that? drop the ball in. Did you have that when you played? Heck no. Here's Sundberg on the option to Miles. See some of that speed that Miles has. Across the 50, a nine-yard pickup on the play. Ron Butler over to make the stop. Ron Butler Watch the surge of the Nebraska front line. Right there in the middle of your screen, number 57, Mark Trainowitz. Now, I'll tell you what, there's some people out there moving the defenders out. Mark Benny, number 73, made a nice block. That's the difference in Nebraska's offense. Line of scrimmage just short of the 45, first down. Play action by Sundberg. Jason Gamble with the catch at the 31-yard line. 14 yards. Herb Welch made the stop. And Nebraska now back on a roll, moving well. Welch, a junior college transfer, waited around to play this his senior year, and I think he's playing even above what they expected from him. Miles and Rathman still in the backfields. Straight ahead goes the big fullback, and Welch again makes a stop. And Nebraska all of a sudden now is at the 20-yard line, nine-yard game. And again, we're talking about the sequencing of plays. They throw the ball at you, then they'll pitch the ball, run wide on you, then they give it to the fullback. And when you're a linebacker, it's so difficult because you, on a pitch play, it's a slow development play. You can skate, you try to get outside. And then on the fullback trap or a fullback quick hitting play, boom, the ball is right on you and he's right by you before you know anything that's going on. With this play, if they run it, Nebraska could go over 200 yards in rushing. Miles is not going to get up the field, and he paid for that one. Tommy Taylor finished up. Herb Welch started it all, and Miles took a pretty good pop. Kimball will come in with a play. There's Taylor out of Chattanooga. Terry Donahue is just as a superb job of recruiting kids out of the state. It's interesting. He has had very good success out of state with really gifted athletes. The guys like Tommy Taylor who can run and jump and catch. Delacarno. Steve is, Bono, too. Yep. Supplemented the outstanding athletes you have here in California. Third down now. A long two to go. Thompson in motion. Sunberg complete to Miles, and he's got the first down by a yard. Greg Rutledge, 30, made the stop. That was good concentration that time by Miles to hang on. Third and three. Now, the last time, remember, Nebraska tried to power the football off the right tackle, and they did not get a UCLA stop. And so this time, they rolled Sunberg out away from the rush and had him drop the ball off to Paul Miles, number 22, for the first down. So many weapons you have to be concerned about on third down against Nebraska. From the 20, first down. 2.08 left in the third quarter. Dunberg and inside reverse action to Swanson. Swanson, touchdown.
We have a UCLA player shaken up at the five. That's James Washington. They're freshmen who just great things have been predicted for. They think he could be the next Kenny Easley eventually. You know, you watch Shane Swanson running this little wing back reverse, but you know, it could have just as easily been Johnny Rogers or Irving Fryer. It's the same. When you see that wing back reverse, you think of all the great players they have had at wing back running that exact play. And the way Nebraska sets it up, Shane Swanson, the way Nebraska sets it up, remember they ran the power, and the block of the tight end here is so key on this particular wing back reverse. Here, number 80, Todd Frame. We talked also about their centers. Double, he just buries the UCLA defender. There's no way that Shane Swanson is not going to get into the end zone here. Again, another look. The offensive line, they're just going to keep coming after you. The thing, as Terry Downey <laughs> refers to them. 77 right there is Tom Morrow. Takes a key block, but Swanson was not even touched. And he very politely laid the ball down. 27 to 3. They're still looking at Washington. We're going to take a break. Gary Donahue's team right now has been run over by the thing. While we were away, Scott Livingston out of the point after to make it a 28 to 3 game, and he's still hooking that off the left, isn't he? He just barely got that one in. But he got it. You think with as much as they score, he'd have a lot of practice at that. <laughs> That's right. Doesn't get to kick very many field goals, but. <laughs> It's had a lot of point after. That was the amazing thing about last year's Nebraska team. They averaged 52 points a game, yet they only attempted three field goals all year long. Washington's up walking around. I'm really glad to see that. This young man has an excellent future ahead of him. The free safety position is UCLA something special, and they think he's going to be in that category. Special. Gerard will bring it out for UCLA. Look at this cut. Good job out to the 19 yard line. So after everything looked like momentum wise, it was switching in favor of UCLA. That last 70 yard drive just kind of put the lid on things for a moment. The thing that ate New Jersey. That's right. Stevens is still in, so Nori isn't coming in. On the 19, the Bruins now trail 28 to 3. There's your time left in the third. Andrews and Wiley, the running backs. Out across the 25, gain of five, maybe six, and Bill Weber made the stop. Now the Padres have clinched. And look at this. California and the Mets have won. The Cubs still have not clinched, and everybody's starting to get a little more nervous each day. Three is a magic number, and they were rained out today. Padres and Tigers have already made it into the playoffs. On the 25, second and four. Stevens, complete to Sherrard. He's out to the 35, and that'll be a first down, a 10-yard pickup on the play. You know, UCLA has really been successful throwing the football when Matt Stevens had an opportunity to do so. But he was under so much duress in the first half and parts of this half that he has, he's been sacked, what, six, seven times. But the way to get away from that is to run away from the rush as they rolled Stevens out there, and he found Sherrard. That seems to be their best plan, and they didn't do it on that previous series. And he was stuck back there. From the 35, out to Farr, Mel Farr Jr., the son of the former All-American, and Bill Weber throws him for a three-yard loss. Started looking for MVPs in this game, and Strasburger and Weber are right up amongst the top of them. I was just thinking the same thing. And how about the offensive lineman of Nebraska as well? So far that time, losing yardage. There he goes. He's out of Detroit. His daddy has a automobile dealership there. They almost lost him to Michigan State, but Mel Sr. played with Terry Donahue. They were teammates for the Bruins. Last play of the third quarter. A throwback, and he didn't get it done. It was short, intended for Tunnell, the tight end. Bill Weber was there again. And we have now come through three quarters of play. 28 to 3, Nebraska with the lead. We'll return after this commercial break. And a word from your local station. 28 
to three. Nebraska with the lead. Third down, 13. And we start the fourth quarter for UCLA. Thrown behind the man wide open. Stevens had time, and then he threw behind David Clinton. And it's fourth down. Take a look at the defensive secondary of Nebraska, but you got to remember Matt Stevens has been hit all day. Now on the bottom of the screen, number 19, Clinton, is going to come wide open, but you can't see the rush there. Matt Stevens was under some pressure and threw the ball behind Clinton. Buenafe will punt for UCLA. Swanson and Schnitzler go back. You hear the crowd in the background. They're going through the wave, which is becoming one of the end things in college football. Who thought of that? I don't know. Swanson got that one out of bounds. It'll be at the 18-yard line. And at the 18, after a 50-yard punt by Bonafé. NFL doubleheader tomorrow on CBS. We'll be talking about that. We're also going to have some scores. We'll be updating on it. And there's Ohio State. That was the 60-yard field goal that won that one. And a real shocker for the Panthers. Bobby Ross winning one. Holding green easily over Miami of Ohio. First down now at the 18 for Nebraska. The Bose gets out to the 20-yard line. Craig Redlich made the stop. Michigan defeating Wisconsin. That was in Ann Arbor. Wisconsin had pulled up an upset against Missouri. <laughs> From the 20 now. Second down and eight. Penn State had a big day, didn't they? And Notre Dame beat up on Bill McCartney's Colorado Buffalo. DeBose, 30, up to the 35-yard line. James Washington back in there made the stop, 15-yard pickup. Now here is DeBose, the third string eye back, probably be starting in a lot of places. You talk about the program, you're right, the third team back and they keep coming right after you. The thing is going again. Look at number 58, Harry Grimminger. He's out leading the play. There's a man who weighs 265 pounds, but he's out leading a little scat back like the Bows. 15-yard gain to the 35. Sunberg. And looked like Thompson and Sunberg were not hooked up on that play. A mix-up. Look at Thompson saying, wait a minute, what do you mean I'm <laughs> supposed to go that way? The coach, all we do is run the ball. Purdue, who earlier upset Notre Dame. Georgia yeah. Tech after Alabama's win, and you know, Citadel played them tough a year ago. Boy, that's it. You know, who was a quarterback for Tennessee was Daryl Dickey, Doug Dickey's son. You're right. We've got Army Navy, what, uh, December 1st? December 1st in Philadelphia this year. They had it in the Rose Bowl here last year. Second and 10 for the 35. Here goes DeBose. Look out. He's gone. Sixty four yards. The third team tailback, Doug DeBose. There's a little slip there, a little miscommunication between he and Sunberg. Actually, enough delay and hesitation to actually let him sprint through the defense. There was a good rush by UCLA, but DeBose outran the secondary for the score. 34 to 3. New kicker this time, Dave Klein, a freshman out of Seward, Nebraska. Made it 35 to 3. And Nebraska, when they play football. The Goodyear Blimp from Torrance, California. The Columbia, Captain Nick Nicolay from Stamford, Connecticut. Cameraman Dick Nilsson and the Columbia is one of four Goodyear Blimps in the world. 200 feet long, you know that? Yes. I want to ride that someday. I want to take you up on that. Okay, you're on. The kickoff to Mike Sherrard. The boss. 
64 yards, and it didn't take him long to get there. Look, UCLA stunts itself right out of this play. Number 55 in the middle of your screen right there, Torrey Pankorf, he's the nose guard. He stunts to his right, and then you see the block by Trainowitz, the center. 57 creates a big, gaping hole for Du Bois. They ended up in a long touchdown run. That was an 82-yard drive, and Du Bois had all 82 of the yards. There's most of them right there. <laughs> <laughs> David Norrie is now in a quarterback. The junior from Portland, Oregon, making his first appearance. And in a tough situation at the 19-yard line and trailing 35-3. to three, Gets it off to Janelle. And that's a confidence builder. Brings it out to the 27. Bill Weber, you have yet another tackle. David Norrie, we talked about his distance finder. Explain that. Well, it's touch. What Homer Smith, our offensive coordinator, said, he's got that touch where he can drop the ball over a linebacker and in front of a defensive back. He's a big, tall guy. He can see receivers. If the, the inside rush doesn't affect him as much, perhaps, as it would Matt Stevens. And so he has second down one after the nine-yard completion and some misfires up front. Dave Bear in the center. Ken Shedd. Involved in this little mix-up. And it's going to go against Nebraska. We have to remember if... Uh... Red ball, encroachment by the defense, first down. That's Shed, the nose guard, 99. Here's Matt Stevens. He's yeah. got to be disappointed, but really, I mean, they did give Nebraska defense some credit. They were in his face all day long. Well, that fumble was the big turning point, wasn't it? First and goal on the six. Nori sprinting out. A little too tall, and that's Clinton going up for it. That's where Clinton needed to be a little bit taller. He's 5'7", and just couldn't get up high enough. You take a look at number 19, Clinton, as he's running against Dave Burke. Now, Burke obviously knows that UCLA is in a passing situation. He's going to give him plenty of cushion in front of him and just kind of drive on the ball. The ball is overthrown. Good coverage by Burke. He intercepted a, a, a ball for a touchdown against UCLA last year. 31 yards with him. Far now in at fullback. Bob Garibaldi also in there as they have the split backs on a second and ten. All right, and he completes it. That's Paco Craig who made the catch. He's just short of the first down. The play before we saw the receiver break outside. Now watch number 26, Paco Craig, break inside off Dave Burke. He is wide open. A good throw by David Norrie for a first down. Well, let's see. First. I'm not sure they got it or not. They may measure here. They're going to. They're going to bring the sticks in. He's got a nice suntan. <laughs> I think he's a neighbor of mine. Yeah, these beach guys <laughs> around on the beach all the time. They did get the first down. Paco Craig with a first down catch. Virginia Tech winning, Holy Cross. Big game tonight, by the way, in the Pac-10. Shed some light on the race. USC's at Arizona State. Be a good test. Arizona State's been so tough on Southern Cal there in Tempe. Never won there. First down now at the 43-yard line. One, 35 to three. Nebraska and Nori trying to run. It looked like a quarterback draw, and Jim Scow, 96, there to drop him. Scow. Eats all the time and can't gain a pound. <laughs> They've been trying to get his weight up. They list him at 235. I don't think he's even wearing that, but he just can't seem to gain weight. Very quick out of Omaha. Be a nice thing to be able to eat all the time, not gain any weight. <laughs> you wouldn't know what that's like, would you? <laughs> a little envious there. Second down, 12. Norrie's going to get blitzed and beaten down on that one, and that's the same man again, Scow, number 96. That's eight sacks. And one of the criticisms of Nebraska's defense from a year ago, remember the offense got all the credit, was they didn't put any pressure on the quarterback. So what did Charlie McBride, their defensive coordinator, do? He decided to go from a three-man rush to a four-man rush. You're seeing some of the evidence today. Well, this Nebraska team, there's Alabama winning. Now Missouri, after losing to Wisconsin, winning their ball game. This Nebraska team plays all the big contenders in the Big Eight at home. They have all of them. Oklahoma State, Missouri, and Oklahoma come to Lincoln. Nori back again on third and 18. Almost picked off. Mark Dom, 51, out of Dix, Nebraska, all 320 in the population. 
In fact, Chuck McBride said he recruited Dom. He couldn't find Dix, Nebraska on the map. <laughs> he said linebackers are different kinds of people, too. They don't have many friends. <laughs> <laughs> There's Mark Dom. He played eight-man football. In fact, that's another thing. Nebraska probably has more players that have played eight-man football than anybody in the country. I think that would be a safe bet. <laughs> I was just going to say. Bunafe, who's punted well on a fourth and 18th block. Blocked and blocked easily that time by Dennis Watkins, 27. Boy, Dennis Watkins, the second punt block. You have to be concerned about your special teams as well. It was a good snap. He just takes a little bit longer. There's no protections. Watkins is all over the punter. No way the ball is going to get off. But that's the second time that's happened today. Obviously, Terry Donahue is concerned about his special teams. Well, he's probably concerned with his whole team. Well, nobody touched him. They blew that one. They really mixed up something on that blocking assignment. Watkins out of the south side of Chicago. Travis Turner now has come in a quarterback for Nebraska, number 14. And that is caught by Todd Frame. No, nope, they say he trapped it. Very nice effort Boy. by number 80. Frame out of Trainer, Iowa. Tremendous fake here by Travis Turner. He had everybody fooled, and Todd Frayne was one running wide open. Had he hit him, it was an easy six, six points. He has to reach out in front of him. The ball does touch the ground. He obviously traps it. It's an incomplete pass. The official was right there, made the right call. Travis Turner really came on strong in the spring. He's out of Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, junior. Kind of in the Jerry Taggy build. Remember Taggy when he was a big quarterback for Same Nebraska? Number. Yeah. That time he rolls, and Craig Rutledge made the stop on him. Well, you've seen Nebraska the last couple of years. How do you, how do you compare well, the I two think teams? defensively they're much, much better than any of the teams that we've seen the last two years. I'm still not sure that their skill positions are up to what they've had, but they're more than adequate today. Well, they were so good in the skill positions last year, it's almost unfair to compare them. They're going for four in 84, their fourth straight Big A title, and that ball is incomplete. Good pressure put on that time, and Turner had to get rid of it. Adam Hutchins, 57. You know, Hutchins out of Las Vegas got his first action in major college football in Lincoln last year, and they were talking about he lined up and Steinkuhler fired off, and they found Hutchins 10 yards down the field. <laughs> that was his first introduction to college football, but he's since recovered and played very well. It's a tough way to get indoctrinated, huh? Steinkuhler did that to a lot of people yes, last year. Outland Trophy winner. Ron Pitts goes back for this punt from Livingston. That's a funny looking one. Bouncing around, wobbles down to the five. And that's where UCLA will have it at the six yard line. 33 yard punt. 10 09 left. Top rank Nebraska. They're impressive. This young man in the wheelchair is Budge Porter and his father alongside. Budge was paralyzed playing football in Nebraska. And his brother Scott Porter, number 36, a fullback, scored a 26-yard touchdown last week against Minnesota. And those two men shed a lot of tears. You talk about the emotions of college football. From the six-yard line, UCLA. Trailing 35 to 3, 10 09 left in the game. Avoiding the safety was Nori. He just had to unload it. Chris Spockman was down there giving chase. It'll be second down from the six. One thing we should mention about UCLA is they got off to a very difficult start a year ago. They were all three and one. Came on to win six of their last seven and go to the Rose Bowl. He ended up the season one of the better football teams in the country. They really did. He came on, blew Illinois out in the Rose Bowl. And Terry Donahue said we were overrated early. Everybody thought we were the same team that played in the Rose Bowl, and they lost some good players. Nori back on second and ten. Connell had it for a moment. At Washington game, we were talking about how they might go unbeaten all the way to November 10th in the Pac-10, and they had a non-conference Houston game, and now with a 13-7 lead. They are tough defensively, too. Goodness gracious, they were superb against Michigan last week. But also, this Nebraska, this UCLA football team, 
Terry Donahue says we will be a good team by the time the season, the conference schedule rolls around and toward the end of the season when they really get into the guts of their schedule. Third and ten. Nori twice now is thrown from the end zone. And he's going to do it for the third time. This time the catch is made, but way short of the first down. Andrews on the catch. McCashlin made the stop, and it's fourth down. And so Terry Donahue's team, which is 10, 1, and 2 in the Rose Bowl, trailing here 35 to 3. They go to Colorado. Now UCLA in the Pac-10 does not play Washington or Arizona. And it could be to their detriment not playing Washington. I think they might want to have a crack at them late in the year. Well, you're right. They would be in control more of their destiny if they did. Buena Fe, he gets this one off and hit it very, very well. Shane Swanson at the 45 to the UCLA 48-yard line. Craig Rutledge on the stop. 9.09 left. Nebraska 35-3. Gary Bender, Pat Hayden, nine minutes, nine seconds left at the Rose Bowl. Nebraska with a 35 to three lead. They led at halftime 21 to nothing. Then it was cut to 21-3 and UCLA had some hopes. Only to see Nebraska drive 70 yards and score again. Travis Turner gives off to Scott Porter, the man that we were talking about earlier, whose brother and dad's on the sideline. Doug Wassel made the stop. That's, that's one of the big surprises of the year. Bernie Kozar, remember we threw six interceptions against Michigan. I wonder how many threw against Florida State. I don't know how you can play a schedule like that, Pat. It's impossible. Emotionally, you don't have enough emotion left. Second and five. Miles. Miles. And Miles again. To the 29-yard line. He saw the Bosco 64 yards, and he wants to be the re number two running back, so he's got to do something himself, and he went 15 yards. You know, Gary, we've talked about the great diversity and the number of weapons that Nebraska has in its arsenal. I'm just reflecting back on the touchdowns they scored today. We saw one on an option play by Sunberg. We saw a reverse by Shane Swanson as he ran into the end zone. There was a fullback trap for a touchdown. They really have done everything they wanted to do today. 319 yards rushing for Nebraska. First down from the 29. Miles again. Inside the 25 to the 24. Ron Butler pushes him back. Nebraska got here very late last night. We were really in. Really hurt him, didn't it? Well, it really did. You know, we were saying, boy, Tom Osborne's got to be upset. They got in here late. They had to turn the lights on to work out, and they'll be tired. They'll be the jet lag, the California syndrome. <laughs> yeah. We had it all figured out, didn't we? Count on it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 35 points later, eight minutes to go. It's <laughs> all right, Pat. All that homework got you ready for this. <laughs> nice pitch. Purnell Gatson, a sophomore out of Omaha, carried that one. Well, they play so many guys. I don't have him on my boards. <laughs> They're playing a lot of guys now. James Washington making the stop. There's Gatson. He's a sophomore. The Nebraska program, and Terry Donahue just said the system is something. He says, I don't know of anybody that could duplicate it. Nebraska football is, everyone stops dead still in the state on this particular afternoon or any Saturday afternoon to watch the Huskers. To the 10-yard line. You know, they're freshmen. They play five games as freshmen, and somebody told me they have as many as 15 coaches running around. Well, they have 200 guys over. out for their freshman program. You know, all the walk-ons and really is an incredible. I wonder why they can't do that other places, though. Well, we asked Tom Osborne, and he says, I don't know, but I think a lot of it, if you relate it to California, Pat, is there's too many distractions out here. Well, there's also an awful lot of universities out here as well. Yeah, that's right. You're the only show in town as far as major football is concerned in the state of Nebraska. Second down, eight. The blitz coming. The Miles. Miles trying to get to the five-yard line or to bring up a third down. I think also when you have athletes that maybe aren't what you call the blue chippers, and a lot of the guys from Nebraska were not considered that when they came out of high school, that then you get kids who will make up for it otherwise. 
isn't weightlifting it, for one of Well, your, your offensive line is right, but isn't it interesting that, like, Irving Fryer, for example, wasn't highly recruited, and Turner Gill wasn't actually highly recruited as well. Mike Rozier was out of a junior college. He was a pretty good high school prospect, but not anything you knock the door down. But you, you hit the nail on the head. The Nebraska builds program, UCLA and Southern Cal, a lot of Pac-10 type of schools, recruit athletes. From the six, third down, three. The guy does look like Taggy, doesn't he? The same number and everything. You mentioned that earlier. That guy being Travis Turner, the blitz again, they picked it up. And Turner, big and strong, gets to the three-yard line. Runs a little bit like Jerry Taggy, too. <laughs> <laughs> James Washington on the tackle. This will be the 111th win for Tom Osborne. Did he get his first win and his 100th win? First and 100th. When he started in 73, he beat UCLA. And then last year in Lincoln, that was his 100th win. The stability of that man, Tom Osborne, that's another reason I think this Nebraska program has been so strong. But kids, when you recruit them, you know he's not going to go out to the USFL or the pro leagues. You know he's going to be there. Fourth down, less than a yard to go. You see the time left in the game. Miles, touchdown. There is a penalty play. There was a good example of the line just knocked everybody down. You're absolutely right. Well, let's see what the penalty's all about. You know, that's an added insult to injury. You're offside and you still don't stop him. Miles went in. You know, I am really surprised somewhat by this score, Gary. I, I really believe that UCLA is a very good football team, yet Nebraska has really put it to him to today. Well, they've done that to a lot of teams. Average, what, 52 points last year. Now they got 41. Going to make 42 here. Klein, who kicked the last point after to do this one. Forty-two to three. Five minutes, forty-three seconds left. Nebraska obviously is going to be number one next week. Now a forty-two to three advantage for Nebraska. They just announced the attendance here: seventy-one thousand three hundred and fifty-five. Line will be kicking off, and they will kick off from the forty-five yard line. The penalty being assessed after the point after. There's Miles. Now, Miles and DeBose, they're going to get on the plane and fly back to Lincoln, and DeBose is going to say, well, I went 64 <laughs> yards for mine. You only went four. <laughs> so I should be the number two tailback next week. They flip-flop them each week. I mean, they're that close. Isn't that a great luxury? Well, I can't believe it. Mine hit this one very high. It's going to be tough to return it, and they won't. Well, we've been shocked by that Florida State Miami of Florida game. Let's go now and update it with Pat O'Brien. Well, maybe Howard Schnellenberger knew that schedule was going to be awfully tough. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson, who took over, probably feels like he's played a whole season. From the 20 yard line, first down, Nori, the quarterback. Andrews. Danny Andrews. We'll bring it outside. Andrews. Has really had to work hard today. He's had the passes thrown to him, but red and white people all around him chasing him down. Brad Tyre made the stop. Brad Tyre, number 83 for Nebraska, by the way, is the son of the late Jim Tyre, the outstanding lineman that used to play for Kansas City. From the 25, second down, six for UCLA. Motion goes Paco Craig, and Norrie's running for his life. Out to the 27-yard line. Norrie not known to be that mobile, but did a pretty good job. Steve Forsh up to make the stop for Nebraska. Well, UCLA will meet Colorado. That's in Boulder. Of course, Colorado today had a long afternoon against Notre Dame. And then the Bruins... Look like they could uh, move through the schedule until they have to go to Arizona State. That'll be a very tough game. That game will be on CBS, by the way. And then they finish off in that always outstanding battle right here in the Rose Bowl. A game we'll be doing UCLA and USC. Third down and two. And he got the first down. 
Kevin Parsons 35 rammed him out of bounds. Pat, at the start of this broadcast, I was kidding you about playing here in the Rose Bowl Classic. You won two of those three. Had to be kind of special, didn't it, playing here? It is a special moment, and it's interesting. I really had not been back in the stadium for 10 years until that, so I was reminiscing last night. And one of the things when I played in the Pac-10 Conference, I, I really do wish that everybody in the Pac-10 had an opportunity to play in that game because it is so special. A lot of coaches would agree with you. They'd love to play in I'm happy I played in three. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Premise made the stop. Well, we were reliving the two-point conversion. Was it Sheldon Diggs you threw to? And it's a beautiful throw to Sheldon, if I remember. A disappointment there of the UCLA bench, Tommy Taylor. This is a tough thing to kind of bounce back from, too, and obviously they have most of their schedule ahead of them, their whole conference schedule ahead of them. Look at their heads down. They're concerned. They do play Colorado next week, but Terry Donahue is an excellent motivator. He's the kind of guy who's going to have to pick these guys up and find some way of hope in this game. They have seven games at home this year in the Rose Bowl. That could be their advantage. Second down and 11. Noy completes the ball to Sherrard. And Sherrard is dropped, but a first down catch at the 47. I guarantee you UCLA is going to be a very good football team by the time this year is out. As we look at Steve Bono, the man with the strong arm and the good legs who they missed here today. But we're going to get a couple more opportunities, Gary. You wait and see how well they're going to progress. We're going to see them against Cal and Southern Cal, That's I right. believe. Well, Homer Smith said that he never had a quarterback like Bono that had more bad luck, always seemingly getting hurt. Right. He had that 399-yard game against BYU, then separated his shoulder last year. Hurt this game. He wanted to play, and they wanted him. First down now. North off to Andrews, and there's a fine open field tackle. That's typical of this team, and that's Tyre again. We mentioned earlier Brad Tyre. And so for their effort, they picked up virtually nothing on the play. We have a second down 10 coming up. 323 left in this game. The concern that Terry Donahue is going to be continue to be concerned about, obviously, is that offensive line. They just have not protected their quarterback well. And then on paper looked it was in great right. shape. That was one of the strengths of the team. I guess sometimes you either get better or you get worse. You don't stay the same. Was close to a big play. Eric Ball, number 21, a freshman from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Had that ball been just a second sooner, he was wide open down the seam. Kevin Parsons is the guy that got a hand on the ball. Eric Ball and Melfar, two freshmen that Terry Donahue recruited from Michigan. Talk about the size of the offensive lineman there for Nebraska. These guys, really, they're almost as big as the L.A. Raider offensive line, and that's reputed to be the best, the biggest in the National Football League. I'd like to have them the same foxhole with me. <laughs> Third down, 10. Nori doing an excellent job of scrambling, and oh, did he take a shot? Did Ouch. he get the first down or not? Kevin Parsons, a sophomore out of Springfield, Missouri, had quite a collision, and he is just one of the many young linebackers that Chuck McBride was talking about. He just feels that Mumford and Parsons and Daffer and Force are going to be around and play very, very well for the next three years. It's kind of a surprise score. Stanford at San Jose State tied. Stanford has that good young quarterback in John Pay. Stanford had beaten, of course, Illinois last week, and San Jose State was really clobbered by Arizona State, 48 to nothing. Washington now getting some operating room in their game up at Husky Stadium. Washington is a little bit similar to Nebraska, don't you think? They're methodical. They pound the ball at yeah. you. Millen, their quarterback, comes up with some big plays. Now, Terry Donahue, you watched our game last week, and he just shaking his head about Millen, how improved he was from oh, that yeah. first game. Fourth down now. They just missed it on that run by Nori by a matter of inches. 2.54 left in this game. And Nori will sneak and get the first down. At uh, Stanford San Jose State game, that's Jack Elway playing against his own team now. Washington with a 28-7 lead. They can really just score. Where are you down? Just like this yep. Nebraska yep. offense. We're going to have Washington later on again. There's a disappointing side. Joe Gasser had separated his shoulder, didn't play in the first two games. They started him today because he's such a leader. And uh, you see what's happened, reseparated it. And that is Deval Love, the preseason All-American pick alongside it. The tackle. He sprained an ankle. Nori, strong. Got away that time. 
from Scow. Throws on the run, batted down, and looked like there were 14 players on the field at <laughs> the time for Nebraska. Scott Tucker was the guy that batted down. There's Love. So, you know, again, it, it was a preseason All-American pick. Had some trouble last week. Was beaten a couple of times. Tremendous disappointment. He's been frustrated, he they has. said, with his play. He has. These guys aren't frustrated. There, they're saying hello to people in Hershey, Nebraska, <laughs> Dix, Nebraska, some of those towns. At least they said hello to Grandma. Right? <laughs> so got tired of guys saying hello to Mother. Second down, 10. All right. Completes it to Bob Garibaldi. One of the many young running backs for this team. And it's going to bring up third down. Four-yard pickup on the play. Uh, you think about the people back in Nebraska. You can't get a ticket if you don't have one now unless it's willed to you. They go to Syracuse next week. So we mentioned all the prime contenders of the Big Eight have to come to Memorial Stadium. And that is one of the snake pits to play in. You have a tough time winning there. There's not anybody that doesn't have red on. <laughs> of course, the reason it's such a snake pit is because such outstanding teams. Nori back on a third and seven. Ako Craig, the intended receiver. Watkins Cartwright defending for Nebraska. Boy, it really is tough to get emotionally ready for next week after you take a pounding like that. It's something if you if you lose a game by a couple of points, but when you get physically dominated like UCLA has, it really is tough. And Terry Donahue has his work cut out for him just getting his team ready for next week. Well, their trip to the West Coast mom has been successful. They're <laughs> celebrating here out in California. They've taken this state by storm today. Fourth down, seven. Lori on the double pump. Gerard, the intended receiver. And Nebraska will take over. What, are, what is Nebraska going to put the thing in to take it home? To... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was so interesting what Donahue told us. We he... called it the thing. and He's right. It's exactly what it is. It's a little hard to really understand it all. It's so multidimensional. Our statistician, Mike Swenson, has been so busy today. He just told us now <laughs> Nebraska has 347 yards total rushing. UCLA with 39. Cleet Blakeman now is the quarterback, number 12, a freshman out of Norfolk, Nebraska. Third quarterback to be used. Here's DeBose, who now has his win back after that 64-yard touchdown run. And you see the time left. I want to thank Mike Swenson, our statistician, Steve Bear, our spotter, They've been busy up here today. There is a final score, and Pat O'Brien and Eric Parsegian will be standing by with the final scores from our studios in New York. Washington State was shut out a week ago by Ohio State. And they have a pretty good football team. Jim Walden does an excellent job in the Palouse country. He sure does. Bill Lewis has been shaken up. 68, a junior out of Sioux City, Iowa. Era's got to be happy about Notre Dame again. The loss to Purdue, the near scare last week against Michigan State and rolling today. Here it goes to post again. Well, next year you'll be hearing about Miles, and the year after that will be DeBose as they pass the baton, the gauntlet, one to the other. There's the guy called Dirty Harry. Oh! Chevrolet MPP of the game, Harry Griminger. I didn't get to vote on this thing. You didn't get. You don't disagree with me. Well, I could have voted for Remember the whole offensive line. Unbelievable block there for Rathman down by the goal line and the trap play. And he was out in front of a couple of pitches. Well, thanks for letting me vote. Is this a Democratic group or not? <laughs> you get to vote in November. Oh, okay. I'll wait till then. <laughs> I'm, I'm really uh, offended by all this. I want you to know that. Here goes DeBose to the outside. Quick feet. Still on his feet to the 45. They called. Griminger, by the way, Dirty Harry. And I just <laughs> didn't know if you knew that or not. And now who's the other guy you chose? That's right. Well, you'll agree with this one. It's number 87, Bill Weber. Had right. what, two or three sacks, was in Matt Stevens' face all day, blocked the punt. You, if I didn't agree, could I say so? No. Or? As a oh, matter of okay. fact, you could. All right. 
That's Weber. why they hired me. I'm the analyst, you know? <laughs> Weber and Strasburger both played, I thought, very well. Defensive ends. Second down and three as they continue it, and somebody didn't expect that pitch, but they still are able to recover it. That's Ken Kalen, 49, a sophomore out of Westerville, Nebraska. So we wind it down with 15 seconds left. Nebraska, top ranked, will continue to be that way. And you're going to have to look long and hard to find anybody better than they are right now. 467 yards in total offense. Our MVP for UCLA was John Lee, who kicked the field goal, the only three points that UCLA was able to score. We'll be back with some final thoughts here at the Rose Bowl. Nebraska 42, UCLA 3, Nebraska now 3-0. 42 to 3, Nebraska the winner. The executive producer of Cottage Sports is Kevin O'Malley. Today's coverage produced by Rick Lasavita and directed by Joe Assetti. Our associate producer, Richard Drake, and associate director, Scott Johnson. Our broadcast associate, Suzanne Smith, field techno manager, Philip Wilson, and production supervisor, Bob Cisneros. And our technical director, Steve Gorsuch, and audio, Tom Jimenez. As today, Nebraska, ranked number one in the country, lived up to that billing, impressively winning here with an output both through the air and on the ground, defensively playing extremely well, getting eight sacks in the game. Now, let's go to our New York studios and join Pat O'Brien. This is Gary Bender for Pat Hayden saying so long from the Rose Bowl.